quite over to get in behind that red. Excellent shot. And I don't think Ronnie can get back into Bork here, so it's just going to be a little tuck in behind the pink. He'd like to if he could get back into the Bork area, but I don't see a path. Yeah. That's the path that you would think of, but can he hit this red thin enough to avoid the cannon on the other red? Oh, well, he could get through to the two reds in the middle of the table, which we didn't think he could. Clever shot, that, because it's virtually forced John Higgins to take in this pot on. This will be a little bit hidden hope. There's no direct path around the back of the reds. JV stuck that line up for us, and it's all about missing that red just above the black spot should he get the pot. Well, he got the angle right but missed the pot, he'll be disappointed with that. Not disappointed where the cue ball's going to finish, though. Or is he? Can he get through to it? I think the answer must be no. I think if Ronnie could get through to it, it'd be playing it by now. May be able to hit the red, but can't get to the potting angle. And of course, if he plays that red near the ball cushion, plays safe off it in a fashion, he's got to make certain he leaves that red safe or tries to cover it. Because he, of course, will leave an easy safety shot for John Higgins. Now, has he covered it with the yellow? If he has, he's played a very good shot there. Looked simple, but it was a good shot. to cover the red up that was in bought with a yellow another two feet of pace that would have been an excellent safety shot Ronnie can almost leave the white where the red is and the brown will cover the red that's over the corner and he will put John in all sorts of trouble from here yeah, he's just got to be careful he doesn't leave that red near the right corner oh and he may have left it you know unless this red helps well there may be a plant on here the one target that Ronnie had to cover was these this red near the le the right corner. The other reds come. As you see, it's a plant. Such a careless safety shot from Ronnie John, wasn't it? Had an ocean of room to get the snooker behind the brown. Well, the plant basically has made this shot unmissable. The only problem I can foresee is that as John plays it, he'll be kissing a second red. Can he get back up the table for a colour? He couldn't, so it's only the one point. One. One. Well, not for the first time this week. A player has put his hand on the, the wood surrounds and got a bit of an electric shock. 
happening so many times. You really can see the red that's uh, near the right middle pocket, but it's tough unless he plays really thin and hopes to cover it with the yellow, leave the white virtually in the jaws of the right hand corner pocket. It's going to be tough to get it. John Higgins in trouble here. The key, of course, if he doesn't cover the, cover the red in Bork, it's such an easy safety shot for John. Yeah, and taking all those things into consideration, I think he may be forced into playing a pot here, will he? If he can see enough of it to, well, he can certainly see enough of it to pot it in by the green, and I, I think that's not a bad shout, John. Play the pot and leave the cue ball virtually on the Bork cushion. Obviously, can't see anything obvious. Well, now he's trying to make contact with the red that's near the black, but he's got to be careful. He could knock this red on. Oh, yeah. That was the uh, a bit like the trick shot that Paul Newman played in The Hustler. Although it worked for Paul Newman. What's important here is actually now snookered on the red that he could see before, so the white at the moment is not in the right place. In fact, you could see that looks really Yeah, you could definitely see the red up the right hand side of the table. This is a this is a very tricky shot this that he's decided to play. Yeah, near enough where it was. But the problem is that the cue ball is gonna bounce off the cushion. You're going to get the tip of the cue out of the way if he tries that same shot again. Delicate shot, this. But that was the problem. If he didn't catch the red right, he would knock it on. And that's what he's done. Listen. Unluckily for Ronnie, he's left an angle on this red so that John can go up for the blue. He'd have virtually got away with it if this red was dead straight. It's not. One. This is the first real chance in the frame for a player to get a sizable lead. He'll be reluctant to play for the black early, but he, he might decide to take three blues before he risks playing for the black. Six. Seven. Little short of pace there. 13. I think the red will just pass the pink. But he'll be playing the red at distance. Well, the way he's played that tells of the red definitely passes the green, but he's overran it slightly. It mustn't be available, the one that's uh, t to the right of the pink spot. Nineteen. If uh, nothing goes in the right-hand corner, he's going to have to play a good positional shot here. The blue is a little bit thin to screw in behind the two reds. I mean, that's where you'd like to have the cue ball, isn't it, Willie? From one of those two reds to the left centre, but 
going to be a good shot to get the cue ball there. I think I'd prefer to play the blue. I think you've got a better chance of getting on the red, even if you have to play a cannon, than you have off the green. That's the circle it'd like to get somewhere near, but the brown's in the equation here if he screws around the back of them. Yeah, that was so much harder for me than the blue. But no damage done, I don't think, unless he knocks one in the bought pocket, he can do anything from here. I think the most important thing, though, Willie, that was an excellent chance that John Higgins didn't make the most of. So this first frame, still in the balance. Just probably needed to bounce a little more. He was trying to stop a path down the left hand side of the table as we look back to Bolt, but he hasn't succeeded. The pink needs a good white. Has got one. Excellent shot from Ronnie. It looked a bit risky when the red he played moved the pink to leave the red onto the right corner. But what a bonus now. John Higgins with a big problem here to get this safe. It is not guaranteed. took the risk. He knew that uh, if he hit as much as he could see, he'd go very close to potting the red. He thought it was worth the risk. He may have covered it with a blue, but he hasn't. So a choice of red for O'Sullivan. One. That's a great shot. Plenty of obstacles in his way. It makes winning the frame at this visit highly unlikely. May decide, John, to leave the red over the pocket and try and drop in between the two reds off the one, maybe two cushions, because that red's there at any time he wants to play it. He might risk getting on one of the loose reds. No, he decided to play the easy one. That's going to be the stumbling block in how to get those last two reds. Six. Yeah, so I mean, he contemplated before he played the blue there, looking at the pink, but I think that's a bit risky. I think I'd be playing this red and looking for a nice angle on the blue here. The pink at the moment, of course, is stopping those two reds being potted in the right corner, so that's what's tempting him to play for the pink. But a nice angle on the blue would do me. Seven. Yes, this is the reason I thought he'd leave the red over the corner. He's, he's quite fortunate there because if he does decide to take the pink, it wasn't his first choice. He played for the blue. That's where I thought he'd try and get the white off the previous blue. But it's turned out okay now. 13. One point the lead. Wow, neither player has took their chances by the scruff of the neck in this opening frame. Even if he pops the pink, he'll don't think he can hit it thin enough to play the cannon. 
Needs a bit of check side. The natural angle would hit cushion first before the red. So if he does play the pot, the pink, and move the red, he needs to play with check side. Yeah, I agree with you, Willie. I don't think it's on. But the points are all important at the moment. It's a valuable six points, this. Well, he nearly got the cannon, didn't he? He may think about the double here. 20. Far away from developing the, the red. Thought about the double, but Ronnie didn't 20. want to take anything to chance there. <laughs> and he's played an excellent safety. Whether it had been that good if the red had, uh, hadn't had kissed the pink or not is another matter. And the slight problem here for John Higgins is the natural escape route coming off the top cushion. The black is right in that spot where he'd want to come off the the top cushion. So this is not a straightforward hit. Okay, he could go wider the black and play with right hand side, but once you put inside on the black is right in the line that he would like to oh another shock. This is a tough hit this. And of course needs to get it safe. Oh, well, he'll, he'll be pleased with that. You wouldn't care where the cue ball finished. Catching the red thin like that was a bonus. But a good hit, nevertheless. No attempt at the pot there, decided to try and get a good cue ball. John may decide to try and flick the red on the cushion near the pink, but doesn't want to be cannoning into the pink. So he sees it's half ball, not too thin. He played the other way around because he was worried about leaving the red. He may have left the red going this way around. Can't quite see enough of the potting angle. Good object ball. I mean, the way to play this, half ball left hand side, try and get a cannon on the yellow with a cue ball, then you might get a snooker. And he couldn't have played it any better. Good shot. Similar problem to the one that John Higgins had. He's coming now off two cushions. The black doesn't really come into play here, or shouldn't do. Oh, terrific hit. <laughs> terrific. Played to perfection. We do say this game isn't all about potting balls, and I think we've seen a few shots on the last few visits from both players that just shows you the high level of skill they play to. Check side in behind the pink and hopefully cross double the red in behind brown and green. Didn't quite get enough check side on and that's why the red's got over the pocket. That was a poor shot that from John. It was key to get the object ball safe there. Not a framing an opportunity really where the green is but we've seen O'Sullivan do some special things before. Ideally, he'd like to leave the brown where it is, John, wouldn't he? It makes the brown easier if he's going to have to drop on the cushion. Doesn't really want the brown on the spot where the green is. Yeah, it's one of those. I mean, obviously, you make certain of the pot. You just be hoping that you get a nice angle on the colour. Any colour will do. <coughs> well, he played it with a lot of topspin. That's not the best place it could have finished. 
Okay, there's a possibility of potting the pink, but look out for the right middle pocket if he plays that. Definitely a chance running off. I mean, okay, there's a thought you could play safe off the green, bring the green into play, and if you got the snooker, aiming to be just right of the the black would be a good line. As I say, the pink, particularly because he's near the cushion, he's got to be careful of an in-off to the right centre. If he plays this plain ball, he's going to go very close to the middle pocket. I mean, the most obvious safety seems to be the yellow and snooker behind the brown. Lots of possibilities. Yeah, but where the green is, he, even if John Higgins misses it and sticks the yellow, it's highly unlikely he will clear. If he can avoid the double kiss in playing the safety off the green, I think that's the best choice. Decided on the pot pink. Ron, you're Sullivan, one. No real damage done. John will be disappointed he's not got the snooker and leaving the yellow so close to the, the cue ball. Chance for Ronnie to gain the initiative now in this important safety exchange. Strange choice of safety. <coughs> John's looking at the potting angle, but I don't see the value in taking the yellow on because he can't get on the green. Say enough of this, but not to pot it. Well, it looked like he was going to kiss the pink. If he'd have kissed it half ball, he'd have left the yellow, flicking it as he's done. He's got the snooker. But the green still is the key to this first frame. This yellow is going to be left over the corner. Just off straight, but while well, we see the problem for Ronnie, he's got to try and get somewhere over there near the green. Tried the cannon. Oh, got the cannon. Got Two. the double kiss. But this green with this safety shot will be released into play. And the next few shots will decide who wins this first frame. Ron, you're Sullivan, two. Hmm. I, I can understand the snooker behind the brown, but it's so easy now for John to send the pink up to the top end, sorry, the green up to the top end and leave the white down in the ball carrier. He's only got it at half ball. Ronnie didn't put John under any pressure at all with that shot. Ronnie was involved in a very long opening frame against Stephen Lee. Very similar pattern of the first frame. Some excellent safety played by both players yesterday and some excellent safety played here. <coughs> Has he got away with it? He'll be taking this on. If it goes in, chance to pinch the first frame. Yep, 
Yes, it's not that straightforward, of course, because John Higgins, if he pots green, brown, blue and pink, he will be seven points in front. So he's going to need the awkward black. Three. Good pot. Not bad on the brown. It's a natural angle, even though he'll be using the rest and his extension. This is handy so. because it, the fact that he's just off straight on the blue, he can get a little bit closer to the pink, which makes pink to black a little bit easier. If he could reach it, I mean, just rolled the blue through about two inches, it's a perfect two cushion shot from pink to black. Now, if he can Twelve. reach it. He'll get very close to getting perfect, but if he's stretching and has to use the rest, he may not be able to play the shot perfectly. There is the two cushion route, and he might decide to play the one cushion route. Played the two cushion, and he'll be disappointed. Ronnie O'Sullivan needs both pink and black. And so really does John Higgins. Yeah, I think he was just overstretching a little bit. And he had to inject a little bit of pace into it. we have to be a fraction out, of course. Ronnie there, half a mind to trying to get the black into play. But John Higgins has certainly got an opportunity now. Clip the pink straight into the, the black. as simple as that. You bring the black into play and if he catches it right, the pink will stay where the black is. Well, I'm amazed with it. <laughs> Considering he needs the black, I thought it was worth the, the risk. Don't bring me into your mistakes. It wasn't a mistake, Willie, it was a difference of opinion. No value at all in the double because he can't get on the black, so he'll be thinking of a safety. The only way he can get the pink safe is playing it twice across and trying to bring it in somewhere near the black. He'll get a good white if he does that as well. Got it in near the black off the one cushion. Might play the white into the black, John, here, not the pink. Where's the cue ball going? If it doesn't go in, it's an excellent shot. A shot that John Higgins had a chance of playing. And now there's pressure on the safety, because if you leave the pink, you lose the frame. Well, he's left the pink, but he's been a little bit fortunate as John. Boy, this is a tough shot. 
This is so tough because you're striking down. It's hard to get cue ball and object ball in your eye line. This is tough. And in the end, didn't play it. And what a superb safety shot he's played. Little tap on the table from John. I mean, I think a lot of us, Willie, would have thought, well, if we pot the pink, we're on the black, but it was odds against the pot, and Ronnie played the percentage game there. Yes, for me, it was the best shot of this frame, what Ronnie just played. I can't think of many players who would have refused the pink. There's one thing for certain, he won't refuse this one. Forty minutes just coming up. Pink and black needed. In goes the pink. The blacks are certainty. Hard fought frame. Chances on both sides. But it's the defending champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan, who knocks in the black. John Higgins will be disappointed. Ronnie O'Sullivan delighted. He's got the first frame on the scoreboard. And back to the commentary box. Yes, it's an interesting first frame, and the safety was the key in that opening frame. No break of over 30 from either player, but some of the best safety we've seen all week. He can pot this, and he can just get round the back of the black. Got to play with a little bit of left-hand side, otherwise it hit the second red. The, the second red from the black, that is. There's the side going round the back of the red. He needs the white to pull. He could do with a kiss. And he's got a kiss. A little bit fortunate there, but perfectly now on the brown. Or yellow. There's an example for all players. Ronnie Five. knew that the red was obstructing the, the black there. Decided at his first possible chance to bring that red into play or bring a few more reds out. Six. And that's what makes Ronnie O'Sullivan one of the most dangerous players ever when he gets in the balls. He doesn't miss a trick in trying to get everything into open play immediately. And that's something that Stephen Lee, I wish he would do. There was two loose reds there. And you saw Ronnie go straight into the he pink. Left. I'm a big fan of Stephen Lee, but he wouldn't have played that shot in a fit. Yeah, but this is a tricky red now into the left centre. Tight against the cushion. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely pot. And nicely on the black. What a chance here he's creating from nothing. Yes, it's a perfect example now, John, isn't it? And why O'Sullivan, Higgins, Hendry, Williams are so very, very dangerous. It just takes one shot for them to try and win a frame. It takes some players two or three. 19. The reds are now perfect. Six. 
well just pot the black a little stun into the little cluster of four above the black bound to be on a red to the corner 33 all as John Higgins has done is break off 34 that snooker at the highest level you never know when your last shot will come I think this is a great frame for any top amateur or <coughs> pro players trying to get into the top echelon of the game. 41. Just have a little tape of this frame. See how he played the first cannon to free the black spot area. See how he played into them very early when there was two or three loose reds. Sometimes you have to make things happen and he's made them happen here. Forty two, forty nine, fifty. See where the miss is going to come from now. Already the highest break of the match, and unlikely that we won't see a century from this position. Once again, this knowledgeable audience realise it's frame over now and they can sit and watch and hopefully see a century. The way he's played this break, he deserves a century. It's been absolutely top draw. 81. Eighty-two. 138 is the highest break of the tournament so far, made by Peter Ebden. Who Ronnie beat in the quarter final. 89. A couple of times this week, Ronnie's been in amongst the balls 90. and asked the referee what the highest break was. So he's aware of what he needs. Not to be sniffed at. £10,000 for the highest break. 98. And there you see. Well, there was a possible 140. In potting the pink, there's only a possible 139. But as I say, I'm almost certain that Ronnie, as he gets the applause for the century, is aware that 138 is the target to beat. And off the black, 105. he can beat that by one point. All the top players are geniuses around the black spot. 112. It's nice to see a break played where every shot he's played from the opening couple of shots he's got on every ball he played absolutely perfectly. This has been a master class in break building. And his opponent can do it as well. I'm sure he'll show us that before the end of the match. It was key for John to get a good start, in my opinion, to win the game. He's got it to do now. 121. Peter Ebden is going to be £10,000 worse off in about three shots' time. 126. Well, he does live in Dubai, so that helps. 132. A masterclass this has been. You can't hit the ball better than Ronnie 
O'Sullivan did there. Only the top players in the game can make it look so easy. Ronnie O'Sullivan has given that young man, John Higgins, plenty to think about, and he wins the frame and goes 2-0 in front. There's a plant on there to the left corner, but Ronnie can't get through to it because of the yellow. So basically he's playing safe off the left hand of the two, so it's not there for John Higgins. Well, my word. My word. You won't see a better safety shot than that. And another tap on the table from John Higgins. That has to be one of the best safety shots I have ever seen. And the reason we're saying that, he's got to avoid the red on the left-hand cushion, and then he's got to avoid the blue with playing with the right-hand side. And I couldn't agree with you more, John. And John Higgins, of course, when he comes to the table, he realised that little tap on the table, how tough a shot he's just played. And Higgins, for me, is the best safety player in the game at this moment. I think John there was thinking it may just be a plant, but he's hit it much too thin. Cue balls come in and out of the balk end, finished in the middle of the table. That's asking for trouble, particularly the form that Ronnie O'Sullivan looks in. Another aggressive attacking positional shot. One. He's in the mood today, folks. Decided it was going to be tough to get onto blue or port colour. And thought, well, as long as I pop the red, if even if the black doesn't go on, I can play a good safety. Just for the record, it's Ronnie's 425th competitive century break. Incredible. And his pot success Eight. rate is at 98%, so he's only missed two balls he's gone for in the whole match so far. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Well, they haven't had time to save on the highest break. Oh, we've got an awful kick there, but it may have done him a favour because he can now play the difficult red, and if it does go in, he'll be on the black. He's got a horrible kick there. He played to get on the red just 32. below the black. Okay. Yeah, I think done him a favour. He's looking on the bright side of things, Willie. <laughs> I think he'd rather have been on the red he played on. 
totally agree, but I mean, it uh, has forced him now into playing the difficult one early. Can he play it slow enough to hold for the black or will he risk going up for blue or bought colour? The fact that he played it slow, oh, he didn't give out the pocket every chance to take the ball. Do you not think it's done him a favour now then with a possible £25,000 for a 147? I'll be honest with you, Willie, I was nearly whistling that song. Always look on the bright side of life. But yes, and well, in 139 in the last. It's 41. Forty-eight. Oh, this break of one three nine means he's now had the ice break three times in the Masters. The two previous times he had the ice break was one three eight, and we know now there is a possibility, and I say a possibility, of a one four seven. If he plays the kiss on the one he's looking at, if he ki kisses it full ball, he might not be on one. He needs to kiss it three quarter ball to flick the second red as well. He needs a double hit here if he plays it. Yes, he decided to play at a pace and make something happen, and he's, uh, he's OK. He can get up and down for the black from this one. He can avoid the yellow quite easily. 56. He thought it was too risky just to nudge the red out of the way. That's why he played it at pace. As you say, Willie, that red to the left centre, he can avoid the yellow. Well, if he plays any other red, he won't be playing for the black. Surely he'll have... Maximum on his mind. Twenty-five thousand pounds for the maximum. Fifty-seven. Well, he's not played for the maximum. Yeah, I know. I've seen him. I just pointed it out to him. Can you stop you from your camera? Well, I can only assume that. He's got eyes on only one thing here, and that's winning frames. Of course, he did take a, a bit of a drubbing from John Higgins in the final of the Grand Prix. 60. John Higgins there made four centuries in four frames, a record. I think the case in point is what we've been saying all week. When Ronnie's concentrating, he looks a different class player, and I think he was concentrating so hard there. I honestly don't think he realised he was on a 147. Because the red he could have played in the middle was straightforward to go up and down for the black. I think 61. he just is that much in the zone. He's just trying, as you rightly say, John, to win frames. Just check in to see if the pink will go on its spot. Looks like there's plenty of room to me. Well, you get a bus on there. 67. <laughs> 68. This black. And that's frame number three in the back. A couple of snookers. 75. This is Ronnie O'Sullivan at his absolute best. 76. I made a comment during the week when I said he was the most natural player I'd ever seen. Had a few me emails, putting other name, people's names into the equation, but 81. I think if you've watched these two frames, you'll understand the point I was making. 82. When he's playing well, 
It's as good as I've ever seen. And he makes it look so easy. I think that's what appeals to, to me and, and the public at large when you're watching somebody, Picking any professional, up. any game, who, who makes it look easy. They just give you a buzz just watching them. And this is absolutely brilliant from Ronnie. 96. 97. Well, back to back centuries in the final of the Masters. He beat the 138 of Peter Ebden in the last frame with a 139. To rub salt in the wounds, if he clears up here, he'll equal the 138. This is unbelievable stuff. John's done precious little wrong. I can think of a, a one bad pot and one bad safety shot, and that's about all I can think of. Well, the funny thing is about this frame... I said at the time, and I, and I don't often go overboard, but I thought Ronnie O'Sullivan played one of the best safety shots I had ever seen. And from a result of that safety shot, this break has come about. He forced the mistake from John Higgins. 125. And, well, he's just taken these. Just a pleasure to watch, isn't it? 131. So, 139 in the last frame. The black for 138. Incredible! It's the genius of work. Ronnie O'Sullivan back to back, back centre great. Absolutely flying. What can John Higgins do about this? Ronnie O'Sullivan leads by three frames to nil. Yes, I think we shouldn't discredit any of the players in the game. We all know that they're all capable of beating Ronnie and have done many, many occasions. But it was a pleasure as it was with Stephen Hendry when he was at his best. You know, he ran century after century. And John Higgins, as John Lafergo mentioned in commentary, four centuries on the trot in the previous tournament. And the reason we get so carried away with those, so I mean, it's just the way he does it. Some players appear to be a little workmanlike when they're in the bulge. That's his first mistake, John, I think, in this match. And this is the hard part now for John Higgins. He's been frozen out for the last two frames, not scored a point, had to sit and watch Ronnie clear up. And now he's got to get his act together and make One. a sizable break. It's not easy to do when you've had no table time at all. So this is a big, big test for John. I, as every neutral here, would love to see it. A match that goes all the way. This is a Seven. big, big frame for John Higgins. And it's turned out to be a great chance now. Play for the loose red at the side of the bunch. Then the black's available. And uh, wouldn't this be a game now if he can win this frame at one visit? That would be three of the best frames we've ever seen here at the Masters. Twelve. Interesting to see whether he finishes low on the black here to go into the bunch to leave choice of red. 13. He has finished low on the black, so the one in a direct line above the black. He must hit it full ball though. If he hits it half ball, he could rely on a red in the middle pocket only. So he might play it gently rather than firm. Let's just see which way John feels it's going to be advantageous. Well, he's played it hard, and that was always the problem, but he's okay. <laughs> he's okay. He didn't play to get on this one, he just brought red into play. Twenty eight.
29. Well, so far, so good. 34. He's got good control of the cue ball. And the ball and the, the reds he's playing are going right in the heart 35. of the pocket. Just one loose red now, which you play for. And now imperative off this red. I don't think he's got an angle on it to 42. nudge into other reds. But this is the last of the loose reds. Well, slight one, but I, you know, you'd be taking a risk here if you tried to bring reds into play off this. 43. And now the cannon. He did have a look at the outside red, the possibility of it going to the right centre, but into the reds off this. Needs a bit of luck. And he didn't need a bit of luck. He's played it absolutely inch perfect. What a reply this is from John Higgins. Two frames, he's sat in his seat, not scored a point. Now a chance to win the frame in one visit. 51. Yeah. Well, in some ways, this is uh, as good as Ronnie O'Sullivan's centuries, purely because, as John mentioned, he's been kept off the table for the best part of 30 or 40 minutes without scoring a point. And at 4 0 behind, you would have already th been thinking can John Higgins hold Ronnie O'Sullivan today? 3 1 behind, not a problem. Choice of red, red in the middle pocket, I think you can still see. 58. If not, the red with the rest. The red in the middle pocket is the guaranteed pot. You can easily get round the back of the bought colours. This is one of those shots where you play in areas. You don't think, well, I'm bound to be on the blue. You're playing for green or blue here, as long as you miss the kiss on the green on the way round. 59. Yes, he's got nicely on the blue. Good shot. Well, he may... He may just decide to play a little cannon here. You always trust to look when you run into other balls. But he's not guaranteed to play on a loose red here for me. Into him he goes. Finished absolutely inch perfect. He'll win the frame now. Wouldn't it be remarkable if he could get the century as well? The fact that this is frame ball, he may risk just rolling the black in and uh, playing the slightly more difficult red on the top cushion. If it wasn't frame ball, he would have been playing for the red next to pink. Warmly appreciated in this packed Wembley crowd. The last time we're ever going to play here, have witnessed. The last three frames, just unbelievable snooker. 73. Just to hold the cue ball, could play the cannon here into red and pink. Depends whether you can get the gap. If you can get the gap, you'll play the gap. There's no need to play a cannon, but sometimes you just think of things. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. The standard of snooker has been breathtaking. Ronnie O'Sullivan, I think, has conceded. He has conceded, so we've been witness for the best frames of snooker we've seen this season. And the... The thing is that John Higgins has remained in the match, but he still trails by three frames to one. But that's as good a shot as you'll see to start a frame. Uh, it doesn't look as if he can see enough. A little touch aside there. Brilliant. Eight. Nine. I think, Clive, we talk about the great strengths of players, and John's greatest strength probably is his temperament. 16. And hasn't he shown that after what Ronnie threw at him to come back in that frame before the mid session interval? 17. 
Yes, his temperament, uh, his shot selection, his technique. There are already possible reds out, but Higgins with an example of the uh, shot selection right, I was talking ball. about. Knew that uh, if he went into the bunch, that uh, this red would be on, even if no other red came out. 25. Into a possible position. What you always want when you get two players like this is a close match going right to the wire. 32. Sometimes it doesn't happen. We've mentioned, and the boys in the studio have mentioned, Ronnie annihilating John here last year. John doing the same in the Grand Prix, the start of this season. But if we could get them both 33. playing at the top of their, frame, uh, their game, and it looks as if we, we're going to get that live, this could be a classic. No need for us to tell you that it's all blacks at the moment. Might just be okay. Might be able to take one to the left middle and come back for the black. I think he can get through to the potting angle to do that. Forty-nine. Just to get the financial implications uh, out of the way, if Higgins goes on to complete the sixth tournament maximum of his career. It will be worth twenty-five thousand pounds, plus the ten thousand pounds highest break prize. Fifty-six. Which currently stands to O'Sullivan with his one three nine earlier this afternoon. That's amazing. Until the year two thousand, John had never. Made a maximum break, not even in practice. And one of my last televised matches was in the Nations Cup, Northern Ireland against Scotland. 64. I broke off, and John Higgins made his first ever maximum break. And I think, Clive, it's the only time 65. it's ever happened in a one frame match. This red would, would leave uh, O'Sullivan needing a snooker. So from then on, Higgins, I'm sure, would strive to keep black ball position. He's looked at the possibility of a plant here, and he'll have to play for it because he's straight on the black. He's got to get the right position here. He's got to get across the table so as he can get to the black, and he hasn't come far enough. So he's going to have to try an exhibition shot here. He's going to have to try and go all the way around the angles. If he gets the plant, he's going to have to be absolutely spot on. That's the only way I can see him getting all the way around the angles. He might be able to come off the side cushion, but the brown and the pink would be in the way. But somehow he's got to avoid 
all the colors to get background on the black. Oh, he's missed the plant. Ten reds, ten blacks, an 80 break. And uh, O'Sullivan immediately conceded. So Higgins has reduced O'Sullivan's lead to 3-2. Higgins hoping that his fourth Masters final will yield his second Masters title. <laughs> it's O'Sullivan's uh, sixth final and uh, he's hoping to win it for the third time today to get level on three wins with Paul Hunter, Steve Davis and Cliff Thorburn, albeit uh, a long way behind Stephen Hendry on six wins. Pretty good break off shot. He's put Ronnie in trouble. And the green's in the way to go into the side of the reds, the right side of the table. If he goes in the other side, he can leave a pot on to the left corner. He's not actually snookered, but he's going to have to swerve this just a little touch to get around the yellow. There's a little touch aside. <laughs> what about this for a shot? If he misses the green, it's perfect. O'Sullivan oh, has a great safety game, and he's needed it this week because he's been given a pretty gruelling examination in that department both by Peter Ebden and Stephen Lee in his last two matches. 86% safety success from O'Sullivan, 74% Higgins. But O'Sullivan, 98% of the pots he's attempted, he's knocked in. Higgins, 90%. I think where Ronnie has been so strong this week, and especially against Peter Ebden, refusing the difficult pot. <clears throat> he normally would go for that extra pot, but when he's looked like he's in a little bit of trouble, he's played the tactical game, the safety shot, and when he's on form like that, he takes some beating. Played with right of centre, striking there to swing the cue ball over to the left-hand side of the table. Well, there's two reds he can come down off. This one or the one behind it, but he needs to miss the cannon on that red that's near the cushion, and he should be OK. Same scenario for Ronnie, must miss the red, it's near the cushion. And he didn't, but he's got away with it. He's been rather fortunate there. Very lucky indeed, especially where the red is finished over the corner pocket. I don't know whether John can get through to it or not. I wouldn't have thought so. The only possibility would be to swerve around the reds. Let's have a look, maybe he can get to it. Just. A bit awkward now, the frame with the black on the side cushion and the pink tied up. That's 
That's not bad. Four. Okay, it's tied the pink up more, but he can get back onto the blue, and if he gets a good angle when he screws back, he can go off the blue and open the pink and reds up. And there you've got a perfect picture of the angle he has to screw back and get the right side of the blue here. Five. Bit surprised he didn't try to hold for the blue. Well, I can't see why he didn't. The only thing I can think about is Seven. if he screwed back that to get the right side of the blue, he might have been a bit too close to the cushion, but he's back up to the red, but still has a problem of getting a good angle on the blue before he can go into the reds and pink. Take your pick. The one that'll get him to the blue will be his choice. Not entirely sure why Higgins missed that. May have been playing with a trace of right hand side to avoid uh, the cannon on the back red. Absolutely, Clive, yeah, that was the reason. And when you put side on the cue ball, it makes the pot so much more difficult. One. White. He's a little bit straight, so he can't go into the pink and reds. He's just looking to see if these two are a plant. But he might have a slight angle, so he can force over for a red. If the plant's not on, there's a another couple of reds that would be available, but the plant would be a bonus if he could make it. Seven. Have to play for the loose red again here. And he's got a quite a margin for error. If he goes off the cushion and comes out into the circle, he leaves himself a choice of a couple of reds. Anywhere near that circle would be okay for him. Keeps striving to get the other side of the blue. There's three reds available, but he's got an angle here where he might be able to avoid green and brown and come round into the reds. If that's too difficult, he's got the three reds he can play for. He's just making his mind up. Into them he goes. And that's a brilliant shot. He's unlucky if he's not on one. 18. Couldn't have played it any better. He hadn't got that much margin of error to miss uh, the brown particularly, and also the green, of course.
20. Yes, one red potted by design, the other by accident. But couldn't uh, screw out of that congested position to leave himself on a colour. <coughs> but he does have the option of a safety. My mind goes back to his semi-final yesterday, the fifth frame, when uh, he played a shot like that, didn't have a safety, had to go for a very difficult long pink, and had he missed it he would have gone 4-1 behind, but he knocked it in, cleared up with 75, which was uh, a very important shot in the context of the whole match. He knows he's got to get the white tight to the cushion, otherwise he'll leave a choice of reds into either corner pocket here. He's got to get it as tight as possible. And it's not by accident that he's played the yellow in such a way that he's covered the red left of picture. John Higgins is in all sorts of trouble here. He might have to try and pot his way out of it. If he doesn't fancy the pot, then it's very difficult. He can flick off the left of the reds and back up the table with the thin one. Well, that's not bad. It's, there's a possible pot on here, but he was just trying to roll that red in and then he would have played a safety. But there's a possibility of one to the left middle pocket. It's a tough one. And Ronnie's refused a few tough chances, especially in his match against Peter Ebden. Clive, he has decided to f look for the safety, didn't he? And it's paid off for him this week. I don't think I've ever seen O'Sullivan show such sustained self-discipline in tactical frames as he has this week. Well, you can see enough of this red, as you can see, to take the pot on, but where would the cue ball go? Ooh, to find a gap would be uh, very difficult. Might refuse the pot, but if he took it on, he certainly would cannon into something, you would feel. He's found the gap. Well done. One. John Higgins won. Excellent long red from tight on the board cushion. Plenty of danger here for O'Sullivan with uh, the reds loose. Has he covered this red? I don't think so. He was in so much trouble there. I'm sure that wasn't the red that he intended to hit. One. He was hoping to hit the back red. Got to play the cannon here off the thin blue. He's got to make sure he gets the cannon right.
he's got a choice. He can go in between the two reds and he'll push them both on. He can go to the one near the pink. Depends how he feels. Well, he's got to pull out a long pot here. Didn't quite work Six. out as he intended. The red that he's going to attempt has a long way to travel, but uh, it's pretty well straight. So the odds are well in his favour, I would say. Performance this will be from John Higgins from 3 0 down. He's just gone 12 favourite to level at 3 all. He's still got quite a bit to do, but there's a good chance there for him. The only difficult red is the one along the cushion. Me. And if he gets to that stage, he'll just have to roll it in to clinch the frame. Nineteen. Seven in front, so uh, three more red pinks would be twenty-eight in front. Twenty. For taking the blue, he reduces that potential lead to twenty-seven. He'll want to take two pinks with these two reds, otherwise off that difficult red he's going to have to get onto a colour. So, and I'm sure John will have worked that out. Another thing we say about John 26. Higgins, he's got one of the best snooker brains in the game. Red, pink, and the tricky red. 32. Leave Ronnie needing a snooker. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Okay. Well, he's having the red clean, so that tells you. He intends to get on that one, Clive, and he's going to be rolling it along the cushion, isn't he? doesn't want to be absolutely straight otherwise he can't get as close to the red as he would like he's got a bit of angle perfect so 39 just drop the red in doesn't have to worry about getting good position Several players have remarked that uh, the pockets are unusually unreceptive to that sort of shot uh, if pace is required, but in that case it wasn't. The red was sufficient. John Higgins, 40. To go 28 in front with 27 on the table. Just a little bit surprised that John brought the black into play there because the balls are nicely placed for snookers and uh, the black tight on the cushion was in John's favour. He might have been better pushing the pink safe, but having said that, Ronnie's made a mess of that. Frame conceded. 
Prim, John Higgins. So, we'll say even led 3 0, but uh, Higgins has levelled the match at 3 all. They're still both phenomenal. Players are returned, on we go. Two more frames this afternoon. A possible 11 this evening, starting at 8 o'clock. Not the best break-off shot this time from Ronnie. He's left that red on for the right corner. And there's room around the back of the black and reds to finish on the blue or bulk colour. Just watch how he plays this, the pace of the white. The pink One. goes, that's a bonus. He didn't play for the pink here. He was hoping to pink be ball. on the blue, but that will do nicely, thank you. Two seconds, please, John. Arian Williams just saying, you may have heard him say to John Higgins, two seconds, John, please. That's because the pink spot's occupied. And it's got to go as near as possible in a direct line behind its spot, in line with the black. All spots being occupied. And this pink might be on, you know. Depend yes, it, it will pot into the right corner. Seven. And if John's got an angle on this red, that's a bonus there. You can see he can get onto the pink and then he could open the reds up. Yeah, it's potable from just the other side of it. Eight. And he's got the angle on the pink, so we will certainly be disturbing a few here. Unlucky. Very, very unlucky. 14. Hit them well enough, but uh, he just needed a bit of good fortune as well. I don't know if he can get this thin enough to get twice across the table. Might be able to. No, he can do it once. Still going to finish near the 14. line. May I just get a little bit of a scrappy frame now, the black tight in the cushion and the pink off its spot over near the left side cushion. But it's been fascinating to watch the tactical play of both players. And then they're winning most of the frames in one visit. Pick that one out beautifully. One. Played as a shot to nothing. That was a return to Bork safety if the red hadn't gone in. And it turned out that he finished on the green at such an angle that he could get up on his next red, but uh, Four. he's just misdirected the cue ball a fraction. Yeah, he was a bit lucky to knock the green into a potable position to get back up to the reds, and now he was unlucky to knock the green in and land on the red. So a little bit of good luck, followed by a little bit of bad luck.
John Higgins, four. Just got to be a bit careful with the safety shot. He's a thin contact on it. A little thin one will avoid that red. These are two giants of the modern game. Higgins uh, appearing in his 45th major final and hoping that it will yield his 26th major title. It's O'Sullivan's 47th final and he's going for his 35th title. Pretty high strike rate from finals. Of the 14 finals between them, O'Sullivan has won nine. But these players have proved that it's who hit, hits form on the day with some of the results they've had over the last 12 months. Ronnie's turn to be fortunate. He held his hand up there. He didn't attempt the plant. And because he hit it on the thick side, the wide is finished short here. And that's a bonus because now he's got an angle to get up to the reds from the green. There's still a problem though in that uh, the pink and black Four. are both uh, not well placed. Five. That was the only way he could leave this pink on was to drop right in behind it. And it's still a delicate little shot into that middle pocket. Eleven. Twelve. Didn't intend to cannon the second red. But will he be tempted to play the black? He might have left the black on. He had no intention of leaving the black. But now that he's got that unintentional, I think he can see enough of it to roll it along the cushion. That was amazing. No. Ronnie Sullivan, twelve. This wasn't uh, the tightness of the pocket, that was never in. One. Yes, there's another little thing that have, would have made John Higgins come out after the mid-session interval in a good mood. Clive, his beloved Celtic, uh, defeated Motherwell 3-1. So that'll make him a little bit happier. This could develop into not a bad chance because I know the reds all look very Seven. awkward. He, they're perfectly placed to cannon into if he gets a chance in a few shots time. Eight. Mm. 
The only problem with playing the cannon into them is uh, you'd like to do it from the blue, but the pink's in the way, so he's going to, at some stage, have to get perfect on the pink to give himself a chance to cannon into certainly those four reds. Straighter on this red would uh, yield more automatic position. Fifteen. Held for the pink nicely, playing the red at pocket weight, just to drop. Yeah, he couldn't hold it enough to leave the pink in such a way as he could play it in the middle and leave that red for the right corner. That's the one he would have liked to have played for, but he's a bit awkward on the pink. He can't get over to the right side or the left side of it as we look at it. So this is a tricky one he's faced with here, but it will open things up. The one at the end and to the left is what he's played for. 21. He's held the spot also. Well, I don't think he can pot this. It's just a safety, isn't it? Behind the brown here. John Higgins, 21. <laughs> Safety, a very good one. O'Sullivan will be looking for a way to get to the safest red, which is the one left of picture on the cushion. I don't know if he can get twice across. He'd have to get very close to the blue. He's looked at the twice across, and now he's looked at the one cushion. He'd have to play this with side to get to that red to the left. That's pretty good. Looks perfect. John's got to be extra careful now with that red that's near the right corner. It looks as if there's a path maybe to get back down behind the brown again, but I think the middle pocket might be slightly in the way. I think he can come off that one, but it's the middle pocket that is maybe preventing him from getting right in behind the brown. One. I didn't even realise there was a pot on, Clive. <laughs> it was a shot to nothing, a, a perfect example of a shot to nothing there. John Higgins, one. Well, I don't know that it was quite to nothing because uh, if that had wobbled and stayed in the jaws, the cue ball wasn't behind a colour, but now that the red has gone in, the cue ball's behind a colour now. That was the side that took him round the back of it. He had to play it with side <coughs> to make the angle. And the side just swung it around the back of that red there. One. Just watch the side here. It's where he was striking from, and it just Jeez. flicked off the red. Yes, that was right of centre striking that uh, O'Sullivan used, Four. which widened the angle 
and uh, as running side made the cue ball run on. Sean Higgins four. You see that shot there, Clive. I mean, that is terrific. And the reason I say it's terrific, he couldn't get in behind the brown because of the green, and he's played over behind the yellow. I mean, that is what we talk about, a snooker brain. OK, you'd think Ronnie would just land on this red to the right of the other three reds, but John's last shot was really good thinking. Now you see, if he plays down, the green's in the way to get in behind the brown, so he goes over behind the yellow. That was terrific. This time there is one red that O'Sullivan can hit direct. And the side again, Clive there, just pulled it away from the red. You could see the side react as it hit the cushion there. Doesn't really have to play it with side, but you normally do with that type of shot. Perfect contact on that safety. This is wonderful tactical play from Higgins. Shot after shot, just right. Didn't look on, go on the other side of the middle pocket there. He was lucky not to leave a free ball from that attempted uh, glancing escape. You see, the middle pocket's in the way. I thought he might play it with lots of side, but if he plays for this red, he'd have to hit it from behind, otherwise he'd leave the other one on. But that's maybe he's going to try that, but he's going all the way around the table because of the middle pocket. And this is a pretty good effort. <laughs> See, if he hit it off the, the back cushion, which is what he was trying, this red wouldn't be potable, but, well, John might not even try it, but there was a bit of value, maybe trying to roll that in the middle pocket there. 40 in front. The other three reds were safe, but he's put it safe. <laughs> but Ronnie's going to move it again. I think the reason that Higgins put it safe is that uh, he knew even if he potted that initial red, he'd got to open that cluster of three.
the reason we've seen a couple of misses is because the players are having to try and make contact uh, with a very thin edge because of the way they're situated. They don't want to hit them thick, otherwise they'll put a pot on. O'Sullivan did have a think there about asking Higgins to play from the position left before deciding to have the cue ball put back in its original position. Second attempt, Higgins plays the shot perfectly. This is another terrific shot. Superb. of the contact the less he was going to move the reds just wondering if John can take the pot on here and avoid the cannon onto the red that's near the cushion there's two there one to the right don't know if the red will go but he's going to play a safe off well the red doesn't pot clearly but that's the one he's going to play a safe off so he's got to be a bit careful Terrific. <laughs> oh dear me, <laughs> this is fantastic flight. It, it is. This is like two chess grandmasters was it the great John Pullman who was a ten times world champion that said Snooker was like chess with balls. Well, I certainly believe that all top players need a high degree of non-verbal intelligence to play this game well. Past the outside edge oh, that time, miss. though. Ronnie Sullivan four. And this time, O'Sullivan asks Higgins to play from the position left from his initial unsuccessful thin clip. Which would have been the choice before the miss rule was brought in, Clive. Yes, there was no option then. You either played the shot yourself from where it finished, or you got your opponent to. We've had 10 minutes of superb tactical play. Oh, 
And I think Clive, whoever pots the next red, is going to get a fantastic round of applause. Again, immaculate length from Higgins. Trying to force a mistake. Problem here for O'Sullivan is that anything from the right hand side of the red is risking a cannon on the black. First mistake. And he doesn't need all that many points, John. 32 the difference. He can get onto the pink here. There is another red available after that. Great chance. Two reds. One. Two points, in fact, would suffice to leave O'Sullivan needing a snooker. That'll do very nicely. This red will go. Seven. Eight. Not many players in the game could have done what John Higgins has done, Clive. 3 0 down, and he's going to go 4 3 in front. Quite amazing. The applause acknowledges 14. that that pink from Higgins leaves uh, O'Sullivan needing a snooker. John Higgins, 14. But it's only one snooker that O'Sullivan requires. One. So he's not out of this yet. He has uh, the opportunity, if he gets uh, the intended position on the last red, to lay a snooker behind the black. just finished a bit awkward on the pink to get to where he wanted to put the cue ball and he's forced it to try and give himself a chance to get in behind the black but now he's on the cushion Seven. that shot isn't on and the white have stayed six inches from the cushion he would have tried to play them behind the black but it's not an option now and having taken the pink which he had to because the black wasn't available. Sullivan can now only draw with one snooker. On your Sullivan seven. When I said Clive it was quite remarkable, John Higgins to lose three frames and win four. The reason I say that is is the way that Ronnie won the frames against him to go three nil up. Well, yes. Back-to-back -back total clearances, 139, 138, saw him at 3-0. And Higgins has won his four frames by a variety of methods. He won two with breaks, 73 and 80. The last frame was tactical, and this uh, has certainly been tactical. And although we can't say for sure that he's going to win it. The odds are heavily in his favour. Well, maybe three seconds from now we can say it if this red goes in the middle pocket. Oh, not quite. So it's still alive, a chance here. The blue's perfectly placed. Yellow and green are out of commission to get snookers behind, but he can stun in behind the blue here. Quite. 
this wonderful tactical frame has been in progress for half an hour. Well, not in Higgins's interest that to bring the black away from the side cushion. Can he get a thin enough snick on the red to get down behind the blue? Unlucky. Well, I'm saying unlucky. <laughs> it really is unlucky. He'll swerve and get out of this, but the blue's out of commission now, the yellow's out of commission, the green's out of commission to get snookers behind. But two shots ago, Higgins brought the black away from the side cushion, so it's certainly easier for O'Sullivan to get the black he needs. And that was the plan there. Trip conceded. However, from John Higgins. Once he'd fouled at that long red, O'Sullivan conceded, so Higgins leads by four frames to three. Higgins hoping to win this frame to carry a 5-3 lead into the final session this evening. O'Sullivan wanting to win it to level at 4 all. It would be a bit of a shaker for O'Sullivan if he did go 5-3 behind from 3-0 up. Well, the white has come out far enough to leave a red on for John Higgins. Yeah, you can snick that red that's in the circle into the corner. Well, he could do. Surprising miss. I think he mishit that completely because he hasn't even finished on a colour. Yes, missed it on the thick side. That's why the cue ball didn't come just out of Bork. There's one possible pot. If he took that on, there's the Nacho Cannon. Now, is he still going to do that, or is he looking for it? I think he's looking for the safety. Quite right. Last frame of this session. He's not going to start taking undue risks. He hasn't done all week. No, but uh, he might well have been inclined to a few years ago. But uh, he's been very disciplined so far this week. Hasn't given way to frustration. Although maybe there was a hint of it when he conceded the last frame, needing only one snooker. I can only think, Clive, the fact that the, uh, the yellow, green and blue were tight on the cushions and very little chance of getting the snooker, but yeah, I was still a little bit surprised. But that's the only reason I can think of. He wanted to get on with this eighth frame. It's amazing how John's come back because he had a couple of seasons where he really was struggling, wasn't he? And it was just a matter of time of getting that win under his belt and then he was going to be right back and he's right back, Clive, isn't he? 
Yes, amazingly, he went three years without uh, winning a ranking title until he won, won the British Open in November 2004. Switch it off, please. And uh, certainly part of the reason for that was that he became uh, besotted with the joys of uh, fatherhood and uh, eased off on the practice, thinking that uh, after a while he could just uh, step up the practice and get his form back, but it wasn't as easy as that. one of the most annoying things in the game of snooker is when you play a safety shot you catch one of the ball colours and you leave a chance and there is a chance for John to pot the one to the right of the black and he he can swing it around the angles here he won't cannon into the black well he didn't one didn't cannon the black I don't think he thought he was going to can in the red, but that has spoiled it. Thought he would miss the red there. He'd be looking for the yellow here to try and get in behind the brown, but these are not straightforward. Normally you'd try and double the yellow and try and get the white in behind the brown, but it's not straightforward. As long as he gets it close to the cushion, it doesn't matter, but... John Higgins won. That'll do just as well. The awkward queuing undid O'Sullivan there. He didn't hit that red as he wanted to. There's a red to the far corner. Yes, it just showed the importance of John getting that white frozen on the bulk cushion. Fifteen. Still a few reds available. Sixteen. How's the angle on the blue? Looks pretty good to me. Okay, the pink's not as close to the reds as it, as it normally is, which makes it slightly more difficult to get a full ball contact on them. So that's why he's just thinking about which way he's going to play it, but it Still be the cannon onto the pink and hopefully reds as well. He's a wee bit, I was going to say a wee bit unlucky, but having looked at it, 
21. Couldn't have finished better. When he pots this, it frees one to the opposite corner. It's a great chance now. 22. Deathly quiet in the Wembley Conference Centre, Clive. The atmosphere is electric and they've had an absolute treat here this afternoon. And I think they'll be a little bit stunned that uh, 30. there's a possibility Ronnie could go to the mid-session and do 5-3 down. Well, the crowd uh, may well be like me. They like matches which display... 37 full range of skills. Potting and break building. 38. Exemplified by O'Sullivan's uh, two total clearances and uh, 73 and an 80 from Higgins and some great tactical play. 38. That didn't work out. 45. He, pl he played the cannon into a couple of reds there and he just hit the one red. That was amazing. He couldn't do that again if he tried. You see, if he cannons the two red, I just put the line up previously. That's what he was looking for and it was amazing. He just hit the single red. You could try that all day and not get it like that. He does have a possible Cut to left corner, the red behind the pink. I think he could get through to the potting angle using the rest in extension. John Higgins, 45. But Higgins who has uh, a great instinct for the right combination of attack and defence, decided on the safety, sitting on his 46 point lead. Although O'Sullivan has lost the last four frames and he's struggling in this one, he's not done a lot wrong, Dennis. He's matched Higgins in the tactical exchanges until eventually he's made the mistake. You could count on one hand the number of mistakes that have been made in these seven frames that have been played and most of this frame or half of this frame. Can he get to the one behind the pink and take the pot on without canning the two reds? He might be able to. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing that. One. That was a guide for him, wasn't it, Clive? Yes. It was a shot that he turned down when he was closer but had to use the rest. But he hit it perfectly from distance. Well, it looks as if that fantastic pot that he pulled out there is going to give him this final frame of this session for, well, quite a remarkable session in so many ways, but he picked this out well. The pink was a guide to the potting angle of the red. Four. And Higgins can clinch the frame without needing any of the awkward reds on the side cushion. Eleven. Twelve.
Just a simple red to leave uh, O'Sullivan needing snookers. 18. Oh, what a fascinating evening session we're going to be in for. Thank you. I don't think Ronnie will be too frustrated 25. because, as we said, Clive, he's done precious little wrong. This has been brilliant from John Higgins from 3 0 down. 25 and the frame from Higgins. Wonderful tactical play, supported by steady scoring when it mattered from Higgins. He takes the last five frames of the afternoon to lead Ronnie O'Sullivan by five frames to three going into this evening's final session. Well, thank you, Ray. What an atmosphere. What an afternoon session we had from these two great players. It looked like Ronnie O'Sullivan was going to run away with things. John Higgins, a remarkable comeback. And anything can happen here this evening. Yes, we really got involved in the match this afternoon. O'Sullivan played three of the best frames we've ever seen here at the Wembley Conference Centre. And then John Higgins replied without Ronnie making a 30 break in the last five frames. But John Higgins was flawless. And it's set up now for the perfect finale. Thank you. Frame nine. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. An awful lot of Ronnie O'Sullivan supporters here this evening, but make no mistake, there's a lot of support for John Higgins. And as the great Ray Reardon used to say, no matter who you're playing or how popular they are, if you produce the goods, the crowd will respond. And they certainly responded to John Higgins the way he played in the first session. That's amazing, Willie. We were talking about a shot he played in the fifth frame <laughs> after the mid-session interval, and it was a similar red to that. He knocked in and, and then had ten reds and ten blacks. In fact, he played the same second shot, so it's quite airy that, that it's turned out exactly the same as the start of the fifth frame. Yes, and no reds Eight. on the cushion, so there's at least five loose reds and colours he can play. So a chance to go three up. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. <coughs> Plenty of loose reds, but the pack's not great, so he, he may decide to play for a loose one this time, unless he decides to cannon off the red directly above the black half ball. He's just looking to see if there's a plant available. Any full ball contact, he won't be on anything, so he may feel it's too much of a risk at this moment going into the bunch. Well, he's OK. He didn't expect the little cannon there. He thought he would have slipped 24. past that red, but he's still OK. There's always going to be the other red available, but the little nudge has left the one that he cannoned into. 25. <laughs> so he's still not going to go into the reds. They're not a good bunch to go into from the black. Thirty-two. And 
there's the view the spectators get and you can see the earpiece one gentleman's wearing there he can listen to the commentary it's a new innovation introduced in the last couple of seasons well he can hold as our friend listens to the shot for this loose red but he's running out of time now for an option to go in the bunch and He's now going to leave the half ball blue this time. It's one of those where you have to screw into the pink and not stun into the pink. So keep an eye on the white. 39. That's the line he's looking at. Maybe just a little bit to the right of the line. Full ball in the pink would be better. 50. How's his luck? Where's the red going? <laughs> Might be unlucky here. If, if that red doesn't cut 44. in the middle pocket, he's not on one. Yes, I saw his arm drop. He sighed when they saw where that red had gone. And this is the plant on. It's going to be a safety shot. Can just get through to this one. But I think he, he's going to play the white tight on the cushion. I think he can get to the potting angle, but... 44 in front. Pretty good choice. 44. Well, if the red wasn't over the middle, Ronnie would take this one up into the ball pocket, but far too risky. Unless he can kind of cue really deep down on it and leave the white exactly where the red is, he'll be on the pink in the middle or the black, and the only red he can leave on is the one he's going for, so I think he's going to take this on. It's there. <laughs> what a shot. John should have had the cue ball tight on the cushion. He should never have left that shot available for Ronnie. You see, the white was off the cushion. Eight. Had it have been tight, he couldn't have played the shot this way. But it was a brilliant opening pot. It helps this time that the pink's not on its spot. It's such a big target to go down onto the reds if he wants to. Decided to hold for the last of the reds at this end of the table that are loose. With the, with the pink being where it is, Ronnie's just coming around 40. now to see how high he needs to be on this pink. And the higher the better, as long as he can reach it without using the rest, because he's bound to split the five remaining reds in the bunch. I think it's still easier to go into the reds off the blue if he had the angle for that because he's more margin for error if he gets on the blue. And the pink's out of the way, as you mentioned, Willie, so he could go into the reds from the blue. So if he plays for pink, he's got to be absolutely spot on. Yeah, the blue's the much better one. 15. Yeah, the pink's off at spot, so we can come down the line into the reds there. Now, is he unlucky? No, he's on one. You probably noticed the difference in pace that Ronnie played that shot. A lot of the times, if you've got the pyramid red at the top, you play to I screw into them, but the because that pack was split like it was, you could just play a delicate little roll into them. It's an excellent shot, and now a chance to pinch the frame. 21. This is a massive frame for Ronnie O'Sullivan, having lost five on the trot. 28. Five on the trot and 44 points to nil behind. He's now gone favourite. 29. I mean, that looks so easy. Hit it with his left hand. Delicate little screw shot. 35. 36. John was a bit unlucky when he went into the reds, but he played a poor shot. 42. This one here, the white, should have been tight on the cushion. <coughs> well, 
Well, he's a little bit straight, but you've got the perfect picture. Watch him screw back here. Well, he's stunned it through. Well, he's forced the angle 43. there. Well, this is brilliant stuff. We always knew it was going to be a classic match. 50. But I think this could be very, very special in the last Masters here at the Wembley Conference Centre. 51. He wants to get as close to that red, anywhere in the circle, and he'd have an angle to pot that and get on a ball colour. So if he can stun up somewhere near the circle there. It's all about getting above the bolt line here. If he gets above the bolt line, he's bound to be on bolt colour and almost certain then to win the frame. What a start to this evening's session. 64. 66. You just sense that this final is going to go right to the wire. 69. Both players playing at the top of their form. 73. 78. 84. John Higgins opened with a break of 44. Ronnie O'Sullivan responded with a magnificent clearance of 91. He's just one frame behind. It's 5-4. I mean, the match is just to and fro, doesn't it? O'Sullivan 3 not in front. John Higgins hardly had a shot. He then won 5 on the trot. Ronnie O'Sullivan hardly had a shot. 44 behind. O'Sullivan clears with 91. You couldn't honestly write the script for this match so far. Look at the pot success rate. 96 for Ronnie, 92 for John Higgins. Quite amazing. 54. And new sponsors here for the Masters, Saga Insurance. They must be absolutely delighted with how this final has gone. Unlikely to see John Higgins play a poor safety, but has he got away with it? I think Ronnie can get through to the red. I don't think he can get through to the potting angle. So he should be able to get back on the ball cushion. Pretty good, but there is an escape. Route back down the left side of the table for John. He can just catch the reds to the left of the pink and he can find the gap. No, I didn't want to hit the green. Well, it's not too bad. I thought he might have had a chance at a red into the right corner, but it's too near the cushion. Yes, it would be a straightforward safety shot off the red on the right-hand side of your screen, up and down in behind the brown, but the red on the cushion is causing him a slight problem. Maybe forced into taking the pot on and screwing back into Bork. Played that very well. 
but the red's gone over the hole and he may be able to get through green and brown to the potting angle. It was all about that red tight on the cushion. He'd like to have played a half ball, but he's covered it. I thought at first glance there'd be a gap there. Might see a little swerve around the green here. And there you've got the perfect picture. Watch John raise the butt of the cue. Can he pull this one off? Too much. Well, it's only a half a chance here. Red in middle, or well, red above the black will cut into the corner. Here's the swerve. Just a little bit too much side. If this opening red goes in, it'd be on blue or pork colour. up behind the yellow. No value in the brown, can't get to the reds. Oh, the yellow will go past the green, that's even better. Three. Four. And running again. Eleven. We're only getting to the point where he'd like to leave an angle on the black 19. again to go into them, but he's still got those three loose reds. Probably get rid of the one that's nearest 20. the pocket now. Then he'd like to leave the half ball black to go into them. Dead straight, so he couldn't get on that one nicely. S slight angle on this red to be able to get onto the black. Twenty eight. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Fairly straight again, but he can screw back and Leave that loose red. Might go up for the blue this time. 43. Keep saying it's always better to go into the reds when they're like this off the blue. 44. Now he's gone a little bit too far this time. It's a much more difficult blue. Just a little slip up there. And you can see Ronnie's grin, Dennis, when he was walking around the table to how poorly. It's unlike O'Sullivan to overrun by so much, but this is missable. I think he was so disappointed that he overran his position, he still had a go at it, but because of where he was situated there, if you hit the pink half ball or the red's half ball, always a good chance to go in off. But he hasn't left anything easy here. 
I think he might be quietly pleased that he went in off rather than stayed up amongst the Reds. Uh, this will test the cue action of John Higgins. This red to the left corner. Out off two cushions and he'll finish on the black. That's the angle he can run through and get to somewhere near there. That's a cracking shot. Similar scenario to the previous frame where Ronnie O'Sullivan had to knock a good ball in to start the break. That was a cracking shot. Can John Higgins do to O'Sullivan what O'Sullivan did to Higgins in the opening frame? Eight. Might have gone a bit too far. He'd love to cannon into the reds, right into the heart of those five reds, but I don't think he's quite got the angle to do that. Might be able to. Now he'll have to wait. So he's got to get it right this time. Might be one of the reds that'll go into the 16. right middle pocket also, which will help the situation. Now he's got 70. the angle. As long as he doesn't go through that little gap there, he just looked to see. He did something like that earlier today where he cannoned one red and it looked impossible to do. Can he judge the cannon this time? A little bit awkward here. 24. Come back for the pink, but it's awkward bridging. Slightly under hit. 25. But the fact that the red is in the middle of the table near the blue spot area, probably just screw back on and off the cushion. Depends what angle he has. He could stun round two cushions, but he'll still be playing for that red. Well, I'm so surprised he didn't stun that one. That was very careless. That made the shot missable playing it at that pace. Stunning it in, he had a bit of certainty to pop that. One. No real problem here because even that red next to the black is possible. He's looking at it now as Ronnie, but it will be available in a couple of shots time. In fact, he can take it now. So no reason why he shouldn't draw level here. Seven. I don't know where this is going to finish, will he? This is an amazing Eight. match. I think this venue, I think the Masters tournament over this last two or three decades deserves it to be a close match. And wouldn't it be fitting if we could have a final frame? 15. Yeah, it'd be fitting for the millions at home, really, for us in the commentary box, the people in the conference centre, but not for the players.
38. On reflection of the two frames, I think John Higgins will be very disappointed 43. not to have won the, this frame. Had two excellent chances. As far as Ronnie O'Sullivan is concerned, having lost five frames on the trot, this is a great performance to win two on the trot this evening. <laughs> two on the trot this evening with style. Breaks of 91, 44 and 56. Gets O'Sullivan level. Five each and we're in for a classic. What I'm saying is later on as we get further down the evening, we're going to see, yeah, we yeah, see just twist on something. Yeah, near to the winning post. Yeah. I mean, 5-5, five, five, not, maybe not yet. Right, a lot of snooker to be played. Back to the commentary box. A generous round of applause for the break-off shot. That's where the players are trying to get the cue ball as tight to that ball cushion as possible. Look at that pot success rate, 97%, quite amazing. <coughs> no value in thinking about the pot that time because there was no black available. I think when the players are playing like this, Willie, you can't predict a winner, can you? It's just who gets in seems to be winning the frame in one visit. Yeah, that's why the, the stat is so amazing. Ronnie O'Sullivan at 97% pot success rate. It just shows you how good a match player that John Higgins is to have held him in the early part of the match and actually taken the lead. Really is one of the best matches I've seen for quite some time. Got a path back down the table. Maybe not behind the green, but over towards the brown. Yes, the boys in the studio were talking about John Higgins' all round game, and he tends to find the top cushion a lot more regular than most. I can tell you one player he didn't. Find the, the cushion is regular, isn't he? Sitting in the studio throughout the 80s playing Steve Davis, he, he used to wear your tip out on one side, you were on the box cushion that many times. No easy avenue back into Bork for, for Ronnie, and I can't see how he can leave the cubal at this end of the table unless he plays the one to the left of the black. And you can only just see that, so it'd be very risky playing it slow, it could roll off. So just be what we call a containing safety shot, and he may leave a red on the middle, but he's trying to get a path back in the ball. This could go wrong. What he was looking at there, he got down and he was thinking about coming off a red to the left, and he's changed his mind. Yeah. That's what he was thinking about, but uh, that's so difficult. So it's a change of plan and just a containing one. That angle didn't look to be on, that's a poor mistake. Has he got away with it? If he's covered this red with the black, he's very, very fortunate. Well, that's as good as winning the lottery almost. Only a small lottery, of course. Well, that was an amazing escape. In fact, I can't see an easy safety shot for John Higgins to play. What a result Ronnie's had there. Yes, on and off the cushion and just rest on the red to the left. It looks the only real easy one. A little tap up here, though. Maybe a re-rack in a couple of shots if they're not happy with the situation.
Yeah, there's a bit of a stalemate. I think they might start again, yeah. Rerack. In fact, Ronnie looked over at John Higgins and said, should we start again? And John agreed. Now, the shot that Ronnie played, the safety shot that he tried, uh, caused the problem here. Now, he couldn't see it. A good safety. He tried to find the gap there past the pink, caught the other red. Looked as if he was going to leave John in for a big break here, the where the ball was sitting. Look where the white finished. And it's nice to see that the both players, after just two little attempts each, they thought, well, this is going nowhere. We're both playing in good form. The match is at such a high level at the moment. Let's re wrap and start again. And some of the crowd were buzzing, wondering what was going on, but uh, it was going nowhere at that, uh, Thank you. that second. Level. So, good idea for the Ronnie Sullivan to break. So, Ronnie O'Sullivan breaks off for the second time in frame 11. And it's a good one. Got to be a bit careful. There's a route back up to the buck, and he can come off that red and round the back of the reds and then up towards green and brown. But he'll have to get a good white because he might leave a long red if he doesn't get it close to the cushion. I think that's the one he'll take to get around the back of the reds. <coughs> can Ronnie get through to the potting angle? But the black safe, don't think the pink goes, will he? He'd have to be able to get up for the blue if he can see that one. Yes, he'd want to be on this not straight, but he can just about, if he pots it in the middle of the pocket, avoid the jaws, but I think it's too risky. Yeah, I don't think he can quite see enough of that. The blue seems to be just in the way of the potting angle. Might just be a safety, yep. Couldn't see enough of it. can see the reds below the pink and also just hit the ones that are near the black spot. So it depends which one he wants to play, but he can get round the back of those three reds in behind yellow and brown he'd like to play. Oh, he hit the pink. Well, that was a bad misjudgment. There was plenty of room there for him to hit the reds below the pink. John Higgins, six. Well, I bet Arian Williams is hoping that John doesn't have these put back. <laughs> I think the crowd are <laughs> laughing. And Arian's having a little smile to himself. He's hoping that John takes this red on. And he is. It's not a straightforward red. Ronnie, a little bit fortunate there not to have left anything easier than this. The reason I say that is because he can't really get the white into open play where he can get nicely on a colour. This is nearly straight, this red. And at the pace he's going to play it, he, it's missable. Might just have a wee bit of an angle to get out for... One of the bulk colours. <laughs> it was one of those, Willie, wasn't it? It was a tougher pot than it looked. I think the harder you played it, if you did, long as you potted the ball, the cue ball would have come more out into open play, but the softer you play it obviously helps the pot, and I think getting the pot was more important than risking the position. So Ronnie, even though he gives six points away with a miss, will be delighted to have got back to the table so quickly, even though he is in trouble.
everyone is disappointed that the cue balls come a long way off the ball cushion because he knows the way that John Higgins plays safe that you can't put him in trouble unless you get him near that ball cushion if he doesn't play a pot you expect him to play a good safety he has got a path back down off that red behind yellow and brown he's got one on the back cushion near the black spot he can do the same thing off that so if he slips past the one I've got the line on, he'll be OK. Yes, that's the trouble when you're playing John Higgins. You have to find the ball cushion to put him under pressure with the safety, because if you don't, he'll return a better one. Get back in behind the yellow and brown off this red, little thin one. <laughs> Purposely trying to leave Ronnie the thin safety shot off the right hand side of the bunch because that brings the jaws of the pocket into the equation. Thinking of an alternative. You know when you play this kind of shot, you're not gaining any advantage, but all you're doing is hoping for an easier safety shot. But John really can stick him in trouble here. Well, I'm trying to see what Ronnie can do here, and the only thing I can think of is off a couple of cushions just to nestle on those reds to somehow leave them safe. I can't see any other way he can escape from it. He's going to have to think about this one. If he tries a two-cushion escape to clip a red, that's difficult. Gotta be very careful going this side. <laughs> I preferred your line there, Dennis, but that nearly worked to perfection. If it had rested on it, he wouldn't have left John anything at all. But there is a red available into the middle pocket. And this is a chance if the red goes in. Both blue and pink in play. <laughs> Chance of a size of a break. Six. If the pink spot's covered, He'd love to pot the pink because it goes on the black spot and that makes this break a lot easier. But if the pink spot is free, he'd be reluctant Seven. to play the pink. The way he's played that was tell me that the pink spot's covered. Well, it, it, it's blocked. Whether the pink will go on its own spot or not, I'm not too sure. There's some of the spots showing.
there's no way it'll go on. He didn't even have to get his little 13. ball marker out there, Ian Williams. That's an amazing miss, the way John's been playing well. That's John Sr. having a little smile there, and I think he'll be giving John Jr. a bit of a telling off for that. That was just a lapse in concentration. He played it with a touch of side, but you could count on one hand the mistakes that John has made in this final. Yes, up until winning the Grand Prix, where he played just flawless snooker, that had crept into his game over the past couple of years, just missing straightforward easy shots. Never used to happen. So now well, settle down now, please. Willie, really, I think Ray Stubbs in the studio got it right there. I think the players are going to start missing one or two because of the occasion. I know it's a long way from the winning line, but you just sense the last couple of shots that there's a little bit of tension creeping in. There's the brown being off its spot. Makes it a little bit difficult to get perfect on a colour. May play for... I was going to say play for the brown low on the yellow, but he's gone round the angles to try and get on the blue, and he's played that really nicely. That was a tough position shot he played there. Yeah, it's amazing to think, uh, Willie, that John went for three seasons without winning a major tournament and uh, slipped a little bit down the rankings, but he's back up provisionally in the top four, where he should Seven. always be. Do you know, he's got a great record, I think, Willie. He got to be world champion and world number one in six seasons. That's quite remarkable. The only other comparison was the, the Welsh wizard, Mark Williams. 13. Turning pro, he got to be world number one and world champion in seven seasons. Fourteen. Another example there of playing into areas. 19. You play for the one at the bottom of the bunch, but if he runs too far, he's on the one in the middle. And that's all about good break building. You've got to be aware of that kind of situation when break building. Don't always play just for one ball. 20. Under pressure, you can play a little bit too hard, a little bit too soft. So if you've got the options, you've always got an escape. Yeah, just steady himself, making sure when he cannons the reds, he still goes through for the pink. 27. Let it well, a little bit more pace. It was so easy to stop short on that type of shot. It's all created with hitting the white on the top, getting top spin. No need to go into those uh, five reds. There's a couple of them available. 33. One either side of that little group of six. He's already 53 ahead, so... 34. Once again, a great response from John. Forty. Forty-one. I'm 
sure that John's family were worried when John missed that very, very easy red that he was going to go six frames seconds. to five behind, having looked like losing three on the trot. But they'll be a little more pleased now, especially if this red disappears. 38. Well, he's still smiling, John Senior. Great character. John's mum is here, Josephine. And I think Denise is down. His wife's come down 54. as well. Flew them all down this morning. 55. Yes, in my day, they'd have to walk. You can fly them into tournaments now. You're not telling me you're number one supporter, Racing Raymond, who's about 18 stone. Walked, will he? 61. Not very far. Well, look at the balls potted. 155 each. 61 on the frame. Quite amazing. I don't know where this final's going to finish. That's a terrific response from the Scot there. John Higgins is back into the lead at six frames for five. That isn't John Senior happy. 12, John Higgins to break. That's enough now, thank you. Another perfect break off from John Higgins, virtually glued to the ball cushion. Maybe a tiny gap in between blue and pink to get to the reds. He's just having a good look at that. He it's probably not on unless he swerves it a little bit. He's playing down the other side. He's playing down the left-hand side. But the yellow's too tight there. This is tough. Either side of the pack he can just about hit. But which side of the pack can he go down to get good safety? was excellent and there you notice the good sportsmanship from John Higgins a little tap on the table he realized he'd got Ronnie in all sorts of trouble there and Ronnie managed to escape just got a little tap on the table there he appreciates good snooker yeah there's no needle between these two players whatsoever they've got the utmost respect for each other Where's the white going? Where's the cue ball? <laughs> One. The crowd are really involved in this final. They're enjoying every shot played. Yellow ball. Don't hit against one. Both these players have won the Masters title, but that trophy that's been around now for a couple of years isn't it? absolutely magnificent. Waterford Crystal in the shape of the 15 red balls, but obviously not red. But it's a fantastic trophy. Maybe the players will be able to keep it with the venue being changed next season. I hope it stays in London somewhere. I'm sure this crowd do as well because they don't get much chance to see top class snooker. On the Masters, you only get the very best. I think that's why you've got to admire the players that have won it more than twice, uh, three occasions, because it's always the top 16 and two wild cards. It really is one of the toughest tournaments to win. It moved here to the conference centre back in 1977. It used to be played in the new London Theatre in Drury Lane, Willie. It was a fabulous venue. Uh, I think that was before, uh, just when you were thinking about turning pro, but that was one of the best venues we've ever had as well. 
right in the heart of London. And I'm with you. I think it needs a tournament in the capital. Well, this can go astray. It's virtually dead straight. A great pot. Pinch the pocket there. Those shots look great when you hit the middle of the pocket, but if you hit it slightly too thick or too thin, you can go in off or catch the jaws. That was such a difficult shot to execute perfectly, and he did that. Well, he nearly missed the green. That's why he hasn't come across the table to leave an easy oh. red. He potted it into the right side of the pocket. And at that pace, just have a look at it in off the right jaw. And that is why he's not perfectly on the red. This is a thin snick, but he's so good left-handed. Five. Not the best nudge in the world. Out of position now. Oh, that's unlucky, isn't it? Any other kiss than half ball would have bound to have left some sort of pot on the green. And that's why Ronnie looks so disappointed. Oh, OK, he's fight. in control, but he knows how good John Higgins is escaping out of snookers. He'd rather be at the table potting balls. Well, if he can't land on the ball, he's going to have to play a two-cushion escape and try and go back up the table to nestle on one. If he can nestle on the one to the right, then that's OK. He'll leave it safe. But he's got to hit it right, otherwise he could leave a pot on. And he couldn't have played it any better than that. He had to play that with so much side, it wasn't a natural angle, was it, Willie? <laughs> Anything other than a full ball, he'd have flicked the white out in, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, into the middle of the table, and uh, that was a really tough one to hit two cushions full ball. Not a natural angle to get in behind the brown here. No problem getting up the table, but this thin one, you have to be so precise as he slipped past the brown. He's covered most of them. Well, he dipped down on that, which made the shot a lot more difficult, and he actually played it with the right-hand side, which means against the nap, the right-hand side is going to drift to the left. And that is so, such a clever shot. There's the side being imparted. So as the white's going down the table, it's trying to drift to the left to try and get in behind the brown. That shot was so much easier just playing with topspin. Playing it that way was very clever. Nothing easy for Ronnie to go out here. That was quite a good shot that John played. For a moment you would think that the red to the left of the black and reds was available, but it isn't. Good effort. John can attempt the pot here. This red will go past the pink and he'll be heading up towards brown and green.
crowd are so <laughs> enthusiastic here. <laughs> the shout as soon as he could, come on, Ronnie, but when you come to the table, there's nothing to come on for, the, <laughs> everything's safe. He hits it too thick. He'll kiss the red that's to the left of the pink. So he's got to hit it right. There's the red I'm talking about. Oh, goodness me. He hit that too thick as well. You could see Ronnie lean then because he knew on the way down the white was hitting the red too thick and he knew that red was going to come into the equation with a route back to Bork. Just watch his body language here. He thought it's too thick, look, you see. And he thought he was going to kiss that red. Missed it by a fraction. And luckily for him, missed the blue as well. Well, the crowd's on the edge of the th seats. They're enjoying every second of this match. <laughs> round of applause, but John held his hand up. That was a bit of good fortune. And now he's got Ronnie bang in trouble. Ronnie Higgins won. That was a useful fluke there from John Higgins. Just playing the uh, safety shot. But watch John's reaction, just that little acknowledgement with a hand. Well, Ronnie's got an awful long way to travel to try and... Well, the, the red he'd like to land on is the one to the left of the black, but how do you get to that? No wonder he's scratching his head. He's going to have to miss the two reds, the two reds to the right. He's going to have to miss those and go around the back of them to get to that red. Now, has he missed them? He has missed them. Has he hit it hard enough? What an effort. What an effort. Oh, I miss John Higgins. Four. At least now he knows the angle's there, Dennis, so he can play the same shot, but he can't hit it much harder because he'll leave the red to the right. again. The only problem with this shot, the harder oh, you I hit it, the wider the white will go. And if he hits it any harder, he could hit the reds that he's trying to miss on the right-hand side. He's got to be so careful here. See, the harder he hits it, the wider the cue ball is going to go. That's the black this time. Well, almost. Oh, and the miss. Front Higgins, four. The angle doesn't seem to be quite there to get to the red, to the right that he almost hit. I don't think that angle is there to get to that red. He, he might be trying to get to the red I mentioned to the left of the black, but this is so tough. You see, he's going to keep landing in that oh, position there. It's going to be very, very difficult. The only chance he has is getting closer to the two reds there, the right side of the table. A little bit harder, maybe. He's hit it certainly hard enough this time. He's going to hit something here. Absolutely brilliant. He won't mind doing those 12 points away now because it could have been frame over. Had he not got that shot right eventually, he could have left John Higgins in and among the balls. That was an excellent escape. Off four cushions. I just wonder whether John Higgins will play this with the right hand side to see if it will drift in behind the brown or will he play it plain ball? Yeah, John's played it playing ball, and as long as he misses the kiss on the brown, it's OK. So that's why Ronnie's shot was so clever, that he played a lot wider than that for the side to drift in behind the brown. Johnny has played it playing ball.
Yeah, there is a possibility here. As long as he avoids those, those two reds on the right side of the table coming back down, he can have a go at a pot. It's always worth the risk. Some 14 minutes since the ball was potted. Okay, the cue ball's been in off, but it's been a really good exchange of safety, this. If he can't get back down the table, he could come off that red and just leave the white near the, the line on the cushion. That would keep it perfectly safe. I'm just looking to see if there is a path back down, and uh, I can't spot one. So he might have to play that shot. He could get there with hitting the ball full, but he's got to get it tight on the cushion. Yeah, that's pretty good. Attempted for the middle, but a quarter ball safety in behind the brown off the same red appears to be the easier shot to play. If he attempts the pot, he's going to cannon into the green and brown. A thin one off that red, but still get him in behind the green and brown and not push the red over the middle. I think Ronnie's uh, decided it might be too difficult to get him behind green and brown and just trying to put John in trouble. Sometimes it's better not to snook your opponent because it forces them into playing a difficult shot. See here, there's no chance of a snooker playing it that way, but what he's doing is forcing John into playing a safety, and it's tough from there to get back into ball. So it's not all about when you play safe, hiding the cue ball behind the colour. It's making things difficult for your opponent, and this is difficult. since the ball was potted. <coughs> Another containing safety shot. Red is not really worth the risk down, if he no, can't please. avoid the four reds. He can get in behind green and brown if he wants to off the two reds on the right. This pot is dangerous. Yes, I think he's got to go for this. It's been quite a tactical battle and this is the first half chance. It's there. Just a fraction away of being on the pink. He's on the pink, but at the white have run another inch, he would have been perfect. Can't take the pink on now. Well, he could, but it's so difficult. Isn't it amazing that uh, half an inch makes such a difference here? He's itching to go for the pot, but this could cost him the frame. That was so dangerous, it really was. Ronnie O'Sullivan won. That's the first sign of frustration here all week from Ronnie O'Sullivan. He didn't really want to take it on, but his reaction there, he just... I mean, that was such a tough shot. Yes, all his hard work in the opening two frames of the evening session where he came One. back from 5-3 behind to 5-5 five, five, could now be to no avail. He should have forgot the pink on that occasion, really. I think it was just he was so disappointed he didn't finish on the pink. 
you could just sense he didn't really fancy this. Oh, he wasn't happy. Six. That's what it means to this gentleman. Yes, and you mentioned in commentary, Dennis, it was all Seven. about fractions. Wasn't it? An inch to the right of the yellow, an inch to the left of the yellow. It was virtually frame over O'Sullivan. And six all at the interval. It's highly likely now it's going to be 7-5. Fourteen. Such a solid stance, John Higgins. Very little moves, only his cue arm when he's playing, and that's a secret, keeping the head still and the body still and just making sure that you push the cue through in a straight line. And It sounds easy, but it's one of the most difficult things to do in the game is keeping your head still and delivering that cue in a straight line. Thirty. Just eight points. Well, nine with the red going more. in, separating them. But it looks to be John Higgins who's going to have a two-frame advantage. Thirty-eight. Have a little bit to think about during the mid-session interval. <coughs> yes, and the stats show you 39. the importance of pot success and safety. Ronnie is in front on the pot success rate, but the key thing in this match has been the safety success. And John Higgins is some four percent better off in that department, and I think that's been the key difference in this match. Just played the slightly better safety, created that. One more opening. 46. Than Ronnie. And now, any red and colour away from definitely being 7-5. Seven, seven. So we're back to where we started this evening. Two frames in it. And Josephine 52. there, well, she is very proud of... Uh, John always has been, always will be. 53. Don't think the red or pot by the black. 16. Near the yellow, if it does, he can take it on. If not, he's still got a red in the book. He thinks it just goes. I'm sure he can't see both sides of the pocket. So, still a chance of a century if this goes in. It was tight, 61. and he made it. Talking about centuries uh, in the final of the Grand Prix against uh, Ronnie, he created a bit of history. He made four centuries in four frames. 68. Probably play out for the pink here. He doesn't have to, but... Well, it was a shame there was no sentry, but an excellent yeah, exhibition of match play snooker. Ronnie O'Sullivan had got in the match. John Higgins may have put it out of it. He leads going into the interval at seven frames to five. Hector, very pleased. Higgins needs three of the remaining seven frames to claim the title. Well, there was a little grimace from Ronnie there as he's walking back just before he walked back to his seat. Once again, he's left this red on to the right corner. 
I can only remember one occasion when Ronnie's broke off where he hasn't left this red. Context of the way that uh, Higgins has been playing, that was a let off. He's potted most of that type of shot he's had. One. Doesn't look to be any way that Ronnie can be playing for the black at the moment. It's always interesting to see how Ronnie goes about compiling a break. Six. Seven. Thirteen. Well, decided to leave the blue into the far right corner. Now, probably play for one of these reds near the black. Well, he didn't. He didn't have the, the angle to do that. Eighteen. Now he's left it to this red. He needs a good angle on the colour. Nineteen. He's just about got an angle on the blue. Now, he's certainly on a red. I 24. mean, the one you, you wouldn't mind being on is the one just to the right of the black. Could get through to that. 25. And now it's a good chance because now he can get the black into play. O'Sullivan first into his stride then on the resumption. And I think the neutrals in this vast crowd 32 will be on his side at the moment. 33. A lot of them, I fancy, would like to see. 10-9 finish either way in the last final to be played at uh, this great venue. 40. Knew he'd be on the loose red as he opened the bunch. 41. Obviously the easy red to play for to the right centre. Decided to go into them. 48. It's not bad, it's not perfect. To the left corner, he may be able to cannon off the second red he pots the lowest one. Oh. Cardinal Sin missing the ball on. Always the problem when balls are so close together and particularly playing it into a blind pocket. You have to pick your angle. And he just hit it too thick. So although he's got a 48 point lead, he'll be very concerned the balls couldn't be better situated for a counter attack here.
one. Not as easy as it may have looked to get perfect position in terms of the angle on the black when the red was in the jaws and the cue ball had to be dug out of the jaws. Eight. Nine. Why this is an excellent chance is because you don't really have to disturb anything. As you pot one, you will clear a path for another red. Just not got to make a, a simple mistake. Sixteen. Second time in three shots that uh, Higgins has asked the referee, Irene Williams, to clean the cue ball. Yes, it shouldn't cause a problem because of the proximity of the red to the left middle, but every time you run out of position slightly, you have to do a little bit more with the cue ball. I mean, he wants to finish perfect on that red to the left middle. But now the cue ball once again. He'll be playing for the black. He'll be coming round off two cushions 21. to play for the black. It shouldn't be a problem, but he's got to judge the pace, right? 22. Maybe a little bit straighter than he would have liked, but he can always screw back, or I think the outside red goes to the left middle. Maybe it doesn't. He could have just had enough angle to stun up the table. And once he pops this red, of course, he clears the path to the the other red to the left corner. As long as your right side of the blue, and he's not. He's got work to do here now. That's gone wrong. Again, perfect position, having finished wrong side of the blue. Oh. Stroke it in beautifully, though. Much to the delight of uh, John's wife, Denise, and his mother, Josephine. Well, this is the only slight problem to overcome, you feel. If he rolls this red in, the colours on the spots should win the frame. 
Higgins had missed that red. Hope sprang alive in his breast. He was fearing the worst, I'm certain. Yes, I mentioned that red because early on this evening, John Higgins had a pink not dissimilar to that red and missed it. So Ronnie needs yellow, green, brown and blue. Quiet, please. To so win a frame, I'm certain a few moments ago, in his chair, he thought he'd lost. Six. Nine. Thirteen. Quiet, please. Eighteen. O'Sullivan first with 48. Higgins replied with 46, but broke down. And O'Sullivan cleared one and last red to pink to reduce Higgins' lead to a single frame. Higgins now leads only by seven frames to six when he could so easily have led 8-5. Good enough safety to limit Higgins' options in reply. Yes, it's going to be a tough shot to play safe or get back to Bork down the right hand side of the table as we look. And there's no containing safety, i.e. leaves the cue ball near the top cushion, so if he's playing this one, he's got to catch him mighty thin. And did. Good shot. I know we've seen some great potting, some great break, break building, but uh, some of the safety, and I think particularly by John Higgins from 3-0 down, has been excellent. Foul. Just Miss. seems to be getting Ronnie on the back front foot John with Higgins the safety. Ball. Miss called. Yeah. Asking for it to be put back, because it's slightly more difficult coming across the ball, trying to get a thin contact, wants to hit it this time. Oh. <laughs> Straight the paintwork. Two excited cries, but uh, this is not. Uh, All the shout is not doing the concentration any bit of good. So can you please keep it down? This is not the golden opportunity some imagined. <laughs> there are some spectators. They see a pot of any kind and they think, "Oh well, this is great. He'll pot that." But uh, too dangerous. Didn't offer position. Not 
to red towards the corner, but when you get a good length like that, you're never going to leave anything easy. But you'd have to say that Ronnie made... Well, he is taking it, taking it on. I don't think there's a safety option. Sometimes you're forced into them. I think it's run safe. If the cue ball was near the ball cushion, it would be easy to play off the nearest red in behind the green. Yes, the point is, as you're making, Clive, if he plays safe off that red, he can't get any distance between that red and the cue ball. And playing it like that, if he didn't get the snooker, of course, he was leaving a, a very easy safety shot for Ronnie. And if he could get this red down to the centre, he'll play the red on the balk line and get the cue ball behind the green snooker. It'll give John Higgins a big problem here. Not behind the green, though. It's a better safety than the one O'Sullivan played, it would appear, unless uh, there's a long straight red which goes. Well, I think that's what he'll have to play. There's no safety shot on here. Good pot needed. Obviously, he was playing the deep screw to get the cue ball back to the balk end. And, he's, well, it's pretty safe. There's a, obviously a chance of a... A pot. They're always difficult because you're having to play it with so much power and backspin. Same applies to John Higgins here. He has the option of a safety, but tempted by this red. He was able to attempt that red in such a way that he would have been on the black had he got it and was not Quiet, expecting please. to leave another red if he happened to miss it. I just wondered whether the red on the black spot may be possible to right middle. It is, but with the cue ball being so close and digging down, you'd probably be playing with a little bit more pace than you would prefer. That's the problem. It was a very acute angle into that middle pocket. Had to play it in such a way that uh, nothing would be left if he missed it. Please hold something out about that, please, security. Thank you. Well, the referee, Irene Williams, has had enough of uh, a couple of raucous spectators and uh, has asked security to eject them. He knows how to deal with those characters. Used to be a, used to be a policeman. One of his duties was looking after the Saturday night drunks in Ammonford, Nick. Meanwhile, Higgins' safety has left the cue ball so near to the black that uh, 
It's preventing O'Sullivan hitting the reds that he would want to hit. <laughs> well, there you are, the security man getting a round of applause just as Ronnie was hitting the ball. How silly is that? Unbelievable. Anyway, it didn't spoil Ronnie's shot. He's played a good one. As good as he could have played. Who wins or loses this frame now is a very fine line. It may come down to one good pot, one good safety. Well, it's very hard to get a good safety the way the reds are spread. Can't see a snooker behind anything. The black's too close to the top cushion. Someone's going to push the bolt out and knock a great pot in. That's what will determine who wins this frame now. on the black was going to stop the cue ball. Yes, but considering he was hampered by the black, he couldn't have played it better. That's the great pot I was talking about. One. Well, is he unlucky and not on the black? Can he hit that black thin enough? John Higgins won. Well, he hit it as thin as he thought he, he could to pot it. Having hit it so thin and the black not gone in, well, very lucky, John, to get away with that, or not leave anything easy for Ronnie. He's finished up getting a full ball kiss on the brown, and, well, good pot needed from Ronnie here. This is tough. Oh. But can he pop the black? One. Well, it'd be amazing if he can't. Would you believe that? Does it cut? Well, what a great pot, as was John Higgins. John Higgins couldn't cut it in, can Ronnie? Eight. Had to leave the position to chance, but with the Reds so widely spread, he would have been terribly unlucky not to finish on one of them. Nine. Sixteen. And with the Reds so widely spread, this is O'Sullivan's chance to level at 7 all. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. 
31. 32. 38. All Higgins can do is what... Uh, 39. Sullivan was doing in the last frame, just sit there and hope that uh, a frame winning position is not fully exploited. Unintentional 46. cannon, but it shouldn't cause a problem. 47. Well, we say this game's about fractions, don't we, when John Higgins knocked the red in the middle and just. Couldn't get to the potting angle on the black. I thought he'd been lucky to get away with it. But. 54. Ronnie knocked in a tremendous pot. And unlike 55. John Higgins before him, he could just about pot the black. And that's the difference in winning and losing a frame of snooker. Hmm. I say that. 60. Ronnie's been a bit careless there. I don't expect him to miss this red near, that's round about the green spot, but he played for the red into the right centre. Bit of adrenaline rush there. 61. It's not cost him. 61. Thereby unblocking that pocket. 64. To receive this next red. 65. And uh, as the applause denotes, it's the winning red. Two snookers already needed. 70. 71. 77. 78. 81. 82. O'Sullivan has made this frame winning break with great assurance. Yes, and every chance now of difficult ground. He, he can get a century before he gets to the brown. Red, black, yellow, green would be the hundred. What a marvellous break it's been. So easily, you he feel, could have been John Higgins's break. But the great thing, as far as... Ronnie O'Sullivan, his fans are concerned. Hasn't he dug in, Clive, when he's had to in this match? 97. O'Sullivan has shown exemplary concentration and determination this week. That's his third century of the match. One hundred on the frame, and it enables him to level the match at seven all. Level with five to play, then. And a bit 
a length break off shot and uh, several that O'Sullivan has produced today although Higgins has just had a look to see whether red to left middle is cuttable Thin one. <coughs> Potable red to right corner, but Missable and uh, position not guaranteed. One. Well, it turns out it wasn't Touching ball, please not minute. guaranteed off that red to middle either, although uh, a couple of uh, inches either way, and that would have been all right. Yeah, touching ball on the green, referee has asked Ronnie to nominate. He'll nominate green and he can just fire away off the side cushion, find a place on the top cushion, that's what he's just thinking about now, where to leave the cue ball. The one thing, of course, he wants to be careful of is not leaving John Higgins a long pot on. But he'd also like to not leave an easy safety or return to Bork. Just got to find the right place with this cue ball. Sullivan one. Hasn't left a pot, which is the most important thing. Yeah, I think he was maybe a little bit concerned, leaving a gap between blue and pink, so John could play safe down the left-hand side of the table, but he's covered that option. Ron, uh, Ronnie's just left the option for John of coming off the side cushion into the side of the cluster. Shouldn't be a problem. When the, the target's that big, it's very hard to force an error from your opponent. Again, O'Sullivan very mindful. If he plays the away to Bork safety shot, and he mustn't uh, leave a long pot for Higgins. As for the extended rest, so Ronnie may be deciding to play thin this red. And the problem if you play this thin and try and get up near the pocket, the corner of the tail where the yellow is, you've just got to be careful you don't catch the bump of the middle pocket. That's the only thing that can go wrong with this. Well, I decided to take that out of the equation by playing with check side, but he's not played it well. He's misjudged it. He's left a chance for John.
soak it in as sweet as you like. But uh, didn't judge the cannon perfectly. Eight. He's knocked the red too far away from the cushion. Yes, he just caught the red too too thick. It will cut, but the cue ball's running loose a little bit. Nine. In it goes. Use the second red as a stopper. But it's going to be a good shot to pot the colour, likely the blue, and get good position on the next red. Looking at the black, that's a bit. Well, this is a tough pot. There is a red just above the black that will go in the same pocket as the black, but tough pot this one. I suppose the only thing he saw nine. by playing that, the red he was playing for, would be stopped from going in that corner because of the black, but he's nudged another one which I think Ronnie can get to for the far left corner. So it's not as safe as John thought it would be. We're going to stick with this Masters final to the conclusion of the match and the tournament. But then match of the day two will feature Manchester United against Liverpool and Chelsea against Charlton. It'll be immediately after the conclusion of this Masters tournament. So match of the day two after the snooker. Match time coming up to four hours. And maybe when... O'Sullivan screwed to the cushion, attempting the red to the far corner. He didn't realise that he was leaving that possible for Higgins. Well, whatever. John missed it. We're only just having a look here. I suppose the the bottom red of this cluster is a possible chance of a double into the left middle pocket. Obviously, it'd be automatically on the black. And he wasn't going to leave much, should it not go in. This could develop into a similar frame to the last one. We get into a situation now where most of the safety could be played at this end. The reds get open. And it's just a fine line who wins the frame and who loses it. Playing this, he's going to open up the red, so he needs the cue ball near this top cushion. That's opened up the frame. There's a possible red just below the pink that will go to the right centre, but it'd be a brave man to take that on. But the one thing you've got to be careful of in any safety shot, you've got to cover that red that's near the right centre pocket. That's the danger ball. Does he stick his neck out or not? Well, the obvious safety is that the, the red that's closest to him on the left hand side of the table but he's got to get the cue ball back to where it is now if he doesn't he could leave a chance for John Higgins and he's just working out the percentages can he guarantee to get the cue ball there or does he take the red onto the right centre very risky it's the pot on the red he's going for big shot oh. 
What a shot to have a thumping kick on. Red left the bed of the table. But uh, O'Sullivan accepting it with good grace. Even though he's left well, Higgins a guilt-edged opportunity. Yeah, you build yourself up for a shot. You know how important it is. You know the consequences if you don't pot it. And that kick, that heavy contact, whether it would have gone in or not, that's not the point as far as Ronnie's concerned. He'll be thinking that bad contact has robbed him. In the last frame, Ronnie got a chance in this type of situation and cleared up with a century. Six. The onus now is on John Higgins. They're all spread out, but they've still got to be potted. That attempt from O'Sullivan could well be the shot on which this frame turns. Although, however attractive the position apparently is, you've still got to do it. You've still got to pot the balls. 13. So as he was uh, two frames ago, O'Sullivan in the position of hoping that uh, Higgins doesn't make enough to secure the frame. Just a little more length required on his cue for this shot. He used all the pocket. 28. It's a little bit wide. He's not perfect on the next red. OK, he's got this red to the right centre, which you wouldn't expect him to miss, but just a little bit to do with the cue ball. It's a stun for the blue in the same pocket. 29. Played it well, though. But the, the main problem is now he's going up towards the D end. He'd like to be concentrating on these reds in and around the pink and black. Very unlikely to miss this red from such short range, and it will make another red available to the same pocket. 35. <coughs> Forty-seven points now the lead. So you'd be thirty-nine. Well, two reds, two high valued colours would be enough. Forty.
46. Red, black or red, pink would be enough. O'Sullivan had to stake all on a difficult red to right middle. One snooker needed. Fifty-five. Three snookers needed. Fifty-nine. Sixty. Denise Higgins and uh, John's mother Josephine and family friends enjoying this. Sixty-two. Yeah, look at her. I bet that's Denise's mother sat next to her, Clive. Quite a resemblance. On the frame, John Higgins. So with that uh, sixty-two break. John Higgins regains the lead. He leads Ronnie O'Sullivan by eight frames to seven. But it can really shape a frame, can't it? It can shape the course of a, a match in the championship. It can. It can destroy uh, what is a, a very equally balanced match. Uh, and it's, this match is still equally balanced, but it would have been nice to have known what would have happened if you hadn't have got that kick. And I think probably, judging by, from how close Ronnie got to the pot anyway, he probably would have potted it, and then it could have been Ronnie 8-7. You just have to be philosophical when these things happen? Yes, and Ronnie smiled and just got on with the job of sitting down. <laughs> Back to the commentary box. Well, Long Red attempted on the assumption that uh, he wasn't going to leave anything if he missed, but uh, the red that he attempted has rebounded to an eminently potable position. Well, he's not missed many, has he? And when Ronnie left that red, he went back to his seat, a little bit peeved. He expected John Higgins, as most of us did, to pot that. I mean, the reason we expect them to pot it, of course, because they don't, they've not let us down so far today. You sometimes feel a bit of a fool in the commentary box saying, well, this is a difficult shot and that's a difficult shot, and they just knocked them in, no problem. Both players uh, over 90% in pot success rate, despite the pressure. Well, he won't see many better pots than that. He was forced to play right-hand side on that cue ball because he was slightly hampered. And even with the right-hand side and checked it, back up the table for a blue. That was a terrific shot. Six. I suppose this is the advantage of being ambidextrous, but he'd have liked to have just bounced off the cushion a fraction more. That's why he's playing it with the right hand. Seven. A bit of work to do, of course, before we can start thinking. I mean, the main thing Ronnie will be looking for as soon as possible is to get in and around the black spot. That's where you score heavy. That's where you win frames. <coughs> 
Eleven. Perfect. And he just seemed to stroke that so sweetly. And he's absolutely perfect on this red he played for. Opening the bunch 19. and doing so in such a way that he knew he would be on the red that was already loose. Yeah, just got to be a little bit careful here. That red near the middle pocket is just making it awkward. Well, he was 20. able to get into the cue ball and screw direct without using a cushion for the blue. Played it nicely. Twenty-six. Could have come back up the table for the blue. Knew this black would be a little bit tricky. Couldn't get as good on it as he would have liked. A classic match. Quarter to eleven. A vast crowd engrossed in it. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Straighter on this bluey to play for the loose red to the left of the pink. Can't hope for it now. Oh, oh well, there you go, you see. Wrong How unlucky was that? Four. John Higgins five. And it always seems to happen. Now. Let's have a look. Is there any way? Well, there's no way he could have envisaged that happening. And it always seems to come down this game of snooker. No matter how good you are, the run of the balls will always affect a frame or two in a match. And could that be the bit of bad luck that spells the the end for Ronnie O'Sullivan? I know John Higgins still needs two more frames, but. It looked for all the world there, it was going to be at eight each. One. Again, O'Sullivan accepted his ill fortune philosophically. But it's hard to bear, nevertheless. A potentially match turning Six. stroke of ill luck. Seven. That's what Higgins is trying to turn it into. Yes, I mean, it's not a formality that John Higgins wins the frame here. OK, there's this red, two reds 14. in the middle of the table near the pink, but the other three are awkwardly situated. Fifteen. So there's quite a bit of work to do, and he's still 14 points behind. I don't think he's going to be on this red. He's played the screw shot and the pink being respotted. I'm only looking at the body language, but I don't think he's on the red. So the points are all square and the frame still on.
Well, he's looking at the red on the right-hand side of the table, the possibilities of playing the cross double. I can only assume it's not a shot that John would normally play. He's just a little bit frustrated. He was thinking of winning the frame at this visit. If he gets the double, it still could, but boy, is it risky. If it doesn't go in, where does it go? Well, Ronnie can do nothing. John Higgins, I think, has made the decision to play the cross double on this red to the left centre pocket. John Higgins, 29. You'd certainly have to question the decision to play that, but as I say, when he got in amongst the balls, he had one thought in his mind, win the frame at that visit, Thank you. Settle as down he now, pushed please. the bolt out too far. Over cut it. <clears throat> but has it finished far enough onto the lower jaw to make it unpotable for Higgins? It certainly is direct. Tremendous pot. So he's back in line to take this frame now. Ronnie had a chance. John Higgins played a risky cross double, couldn't pot the red. Lots of pressure on that one. And it's got uh, the most difficult red but one out of the way. Yes, John having a close look at this red near the right centre. It looks as though it's easy enough to pot. Eight. Nine. Well, he played to Cannon that red, so... Uh... It must be no formality to pot it, even if he gets right on it. It's amazing, doesn't it? Well, he'd be a better judge than us. So, is it possible? The fact he tried to move it suggests not. It curves in, but is it not far enough down the curve? Fourteen. Well, if the red near the middle pocket doesn't go, then it's going to be a tall order to win the frame at this visit, and we can only base it on John Higgins' opinion. Well, that's going to be the key. Well, this is a tough red. I'll take this too lightly. John Higgins, 14. Mm, well... Ronnie can definitely get through to the red, to the right centre. John Higgins, I believe, thinks it doesn't pot. What's Ronnie's opinion? Well, it's certainly more difficult from the range that O'Sullivan has to play from. It would be from about six inches. 
if it goes at all it would need uh, the gentlest of slow rolls he contemplated there swerving to hit the other red chose to play with side off the cushion to the red on which he was snookered Higgins having a good look at this may be one possibility is to snick the first red in off the second because that would develop the other red yes but the red near the pocket is tight against the cushion he'd have to just flick that red if he caught it caught a ball he'd get a double kiss and the red wouldn't go in I think he's got to pot this clean here That was a problem, you're going to get a double kiss with it being tight on the cushion. And he's left, well, the first red, but the other one has gone pretty safe. Frame back on. That's the problem with that red being tight on the cushion. You had to pot it clean. you wouldn't mind if you weren't on a colour because you can get the advantage in this very important tactical exchange if you can start off it off with a snooker your slight favourite oh he's not reached foul Ronnie Sullivan one John Higgins four three ball well, we see it so many times don't we a player trickle up nestle right behind the ball and we always say it's a lot more difficult than it looks and look at that it's just stopped and the snooker that John Higgins should have been in is now Ronnie O'Sullivan's problem he's got to hit this red and somehow get it safe O'Sullivan wanted not just a snooker but a snooker tight up behind the green But from that self-inflicted problem, it's not turned out too badly. Although uh, red to right corner is a possibility. Difficult enough for Higgins to refuse it in favour of the greater certainty of a potentially creative safety shot. Of all, he had to get that red past the middle pocket, and he didn't want the red to kiss the yellow. Yes, it's that flick on the yellow that took the pace out of the red, and it is cuttable into the left centre. So Ronnie can't do any more now. He needs this man to make a mistake, and if John can cut this red in and finish on a colour. It'll be a frame winner. One. The cue ball <laughs> has just about crawled out of board by a fraction of an inch, but uh, this is not an automatic clinch now. 18 in front, a couple of inches further out of Bork, and this would have been elementary. Black ball. Front against one. Wasn't tempted by the long black. Yes, and of course. I'm still alert enough to know, try and put the black safe, because Ronnie needs the six remaining colours, including the black, of course. The 
one thing John didn't do was get the snooker, although Ronnie has not played that well. John Higgins gets another chance, coming up thick and fast at the moment. Yellow and green needed. O'Sullivan can only wait and hope. And uh, John Higgins Senior reveling in this match. <clears throat> the yellow goes wide, but at random it finishes safe. Yeah, you'd have to say just at the moment that maybe the slight run of the ball is favouring John Higgins, but that comes and goes for both players. Having missed the pot like that, you you could expect to leave it, particularly how thick he hit the yellow, but there's a chance here for Ronnie to play a, a good safety. I mean, you'd think if he could stun it down, but the problem is the yellow may run into the black. Although well, that might not be a bad thing for Ronnie. Bring the black into play, but where would the yellow go? Did the most important thing, kept the cue ball tight on the ball cushion and certainly attempted to move the black. Too difficult to attempt that yellow. He didn't hit it very well though, did he? But this is a tough shot and a big one because it's one of those, if you miss it, more or less going to stick it up. But it's a tremendous pot. But he still needs the black, remember? Five. Don't call out while he's on the break, please. Nine. A good angle on the pink, imperative. Good angle on the pink, you have a choice of disturbing the black or dropping behind it. 14. He's going to have to come off the top cushion. He can't screw it direct. 14. He's not got the cannon and he's not dropped behind it. 20. It'd be a big ass to go for this. He just got into the cue ball a fraction too much. Overhit and Ronnie overhit grossly. He's handed the frame to Higgins. Quiet, please. Settle down now. Well, the first time playing left-handed seems to have let him down. I can't believe what he's played there. A shot with the rest into that pocket. Quiet, please. Missed. Yes, and every time he's overcut it. That was the easiest that he's missed. Yeah. Higgins had a simple black to go two up with three to play. But it's O'Sullivan with a long black who levels the match at eight all. Frame 18, John Higgins to break. And uh, I repeat our earlier announcement that match of the day will follow the conclusion of the snooker.
Higgins didn't intend to bring the end red down there but fortunately for him he's covered it just trying to nestle into the side but playing it like this you just got to be careful you don't slide past it well he's hit the pink foul and a miss John Higgins, six. Well, will John have it replaced? There is a red in the far end of the table that he could play. Yeah, okay. But no, he's asking for it to be replaced. Obviously, the way Ronnie played the escape, striking down, it wasn't a natural angle to get into the side of the reds. Now, the, the referee, I cannot believe uh, Arian Williams was... Disappointing me somewhat in his replacement of the balls. It's a very important situation, this. And, you know, he was putting the cue ball behind the yellow. And I also think that when Ronnie hit the pink, he knocked a red down towards the black. I don't think there was that many open reds there. Look at the two reds by the black. There was only one before. They're going to have to start using our technology yep, okay. because this has made a big big difference here one of those two reds to the right of the black was in that cluster and that and the side of that cluster was a lot bigger target than it is now yes that's where they were and as you say John it's different to where they are now where O'Sullivan is going to make his second attempt Changed his shot. <laughs> Moving only one red, but he's left it on. Higgins is every bit as tenacious as uh, O'Sullivan has proved to be. O'Sullivan uh, has been, uh, it seems, perpetually recovering from a couple of frames behind. Before getting in front at 9-8. And the question here is whether Higgins can reach the potting angle. Let me guess. <laughs> I think that's your answer. He's just run a fraction too far. And he played the blue really well. He couldn't have played it better, but just that one extra roll, and it's covered the red, and there's the reaction. As a player, you sit in your chair, and if you want to know if a player's on a ball or not, Look at his body language. Just a fraction out. Okay. Higgins has calculated that uh, if he plays safe off the outside red, it may flick off another red near the corner. Thick contact on the second red. Quiet, please. This vast crowd absolutely engrossed in this. We've seen some great finals, and this is right up there with the best. Yes, I couldn't agree with you more, Clive, from frame one, which was a real humdinger. Ronnie managed to win it on the black. We've had everything. Great breaks, great safety, great potting. It's been a memorable, memorable match, and we go down in snooker folklore. And, of course, remembered most because it'll be the last time here.
choice of shot from Higgins. And uh, he's been favoured by a bit of luck again. Accepted with good by O'Sullivan. None of the eight. How could he be so lucky syndrome? Yes, I suppose Ronnie O'Sullivan is thinking, well, no matter what happens, I'm going to get another 40. chance to win this match because we could be into a decider. John Higgins, on 50. the other hand, has got to make the most of every opportunity. One mistake and the match could be gone. So, yeah, a bit of luck with the black, but very brave shot he played. Decided to use his attacking instinct. Back against the wall. 22. He's played that nicely. Twenty-three. This has been so good that I'm sure the neutrals are willing it thirty to go the distance. Thirty-one. Is he on a red though? Is there a red that will go to the left corner? Hit the black thick, so he may not have gone far as far up the table as he expected. Nevertheless, he'll be disappointed not to make the most of that opportunity. Well, there was a red available. One. Ronnie potted the red, but he's not good on the colour. Higgins uh, has a rueful expression as he reflects uh, on missing that uh, routine black from its spot. Is he going to get another chance? He certainly is. That was a tricky cut. O'Sullivan did play it in such a way that the pink uh, might have blocked the pocket through not quite dropping. But my guess is that uh, that red is potable past the pink. Yes, well, rather you than me, Clive. If you were straight behind it, OK. I think he's contemplating the double here. Red to the right centre. Yeah. And he's got it. Well, he's got it. And another chance now to level the match and take us into a decider. The advantage of that shot choice was that he wasn't leaving another red if the double failed. Seven. Quiet. Eight. Well, he's playing for the black. There's a red at the top, which I assume he's holding the pink spot. 
black will go on the highest available, which in this case will be the yellow. A little bit straighter on the black, he'd have been better on this red, but he won't be too bothered now. 57 points in front. 15. 75 remaining. So, two reds, two colours. Sixteen. May have to play a cannon here. This is the only thing that could have gone wrong. He pots the blue. Got 63 points in front, 67 left. Just needs the cannon to develop a red. He'll settle for any red. That's all he needs. A red took a 64 ahead with 59 remaining. I think he'll be cutting the red back into the right corner, not the one along the top cushion. That would be missable. Made sure that he avoided the left middle, which was uh, the only possible pitfall there. So we can say with confidence that this match is going to go the distance. 25. All 19 frames are going to be needed. Yes, and every credit to John Higgins. During the interval of the last frame, we pointed out the black he missed, which would have taken him 9-7 in front. And that could have been a turning point. But he's dug in deep here. 32. OK, he needed two chances, but that's not the point. He's got his reward, he's won the frame. And what a decider we're in for. Thirty-nine. Forty. Forty in the frame. Sporting theatre at its best. A vast crowd. Must be two and a half thousand people in here. It's the last match that uh, will be staged in this great arena, and it's been a great match. There's the trophy, which will go either to O'Sullivan for the third time or to Higgins for the second. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. The camera's away now, please. Ronnie breaks off, and I suppose, Clive, the £65,000 question who's going to win it? Because that is the difference between winner and loser. Yes, 125000 for the winner, 60000 for the runner up, but uh, I think even more than that. It's the title. At the end of your career, people ask, how many majors did you win? Well, a long pot that he's not quite a few in, but he's not left anything easy for Ronnie.
5. Just for the record, 93% pop success. success rate, O'Sullivan 90% Higgins. And that's been achieved under extreme pressure, particularly this evening. Caught the pink smack on the nose, as intended. Absolutely superb shot, yeah. couldn't have hit it better. Considering the circumstances, that was a superb shot. Give himself a great chance. But all well. the pressure is on. Deciding frame of the Masters. Nothing, no ball is that easy. The big moments test the great sportsman. 18. The adrenaline is running, the match is on a knife edge. How do you cope with it? Nineteen. For shot, you know, to play for the blue. 24. He could have screwed back and played for the pink, but he 25. thought the blue was going to offer him better position. If they hit those reds fuller, he'd have been on an easy red to the left corner. He's still on this red to the right corner, but he's just got to avoid cannon on other reds here, which he did nicely. 41. So even on the utmost pressure, the touch still there. Forty-six. Higgins just hoping for a chance. Just dropping behind the red to the right centre, but a little 54. bit straighter would have been better. Fifty five. Takes two to make a great match, and that's what we've had here. Two great players and a memorable match. Still a bit of work to do, Ronnie, here. This isn't over yet. And he's not quite hard enough on 60. this red. There you see it, 60 ahead, 75 remaining. And if he gets less than the blue, he's going to still need two more reds. It was enough of a cutback to make it uh, awkward and missable.
but uh, certainly no easy road for Higgins to start a response. Well, I'm certain when John was playing that, he was thinking, I need to get this. As it happened, he didn't. He wasn't on the black, but the red runs safe. So he's not going to lose it at this visit, I don't think. Well, can Ronnie see enough of this red? Oh, didn't think he could. He must have thought he could, though. And he knew that if he could pot that, the black in addition would have left Higgins needing a snooker. That needs to go in, that needs to drop. Oh, what it has! And I honestly think that John Higgins didn't think it was. One. A wry smile to run it, I think he was walking back to his seat. Talk about potting a ball at its last roll. Six. It's slowing, it's slowing, it's slowing. It stopped, but it drops. Just enough curve on the pocket edge to allow, if I may borrow your phrase, John, gravity to take over. What an unbelievable shot that was. And as I say, John Higgins was walking back to his chair. He didn't think he'd hit it hard enough. Seven. Well, there's lots of problems here. 53 deficit is one of them. There's the red type behind the pink. There's the one on the right-hand side cushion. What a finish this would be if John could somehow win the frame at this visit. This would be one of the most remarkable clearances ever seen. Nine. Ten. Higgins came to the table in this deciding frame. Sixty behind. Now so Sullivan's turn to wait and hope. Well, does this 15. red that's behind the pink, he won't be playing it this time, He'll be playing the one on the left-hand side, but I don't think the other one pots. So what with that red 16. and the red on the side cushion, there's a bit of work to do. He'll probably play the cannon this time on the red behind the pink. As long as he doesn't hit it full in the face, he'll develop the red. One obstacle overcome. 23. Has he got an angle on the blue to run through and maybe disturb the red? I'm just looking at his face. I'd say no. Well, thinking about the double. 29. Well, if ever there was a last gasp effort, Quite this. this is it from John Higgins. He's only one thing in mind. Can I clear up to win this match? He certainly can now. So this fantastic final. 
appears that it's going to have one final extraordinary twist in its tail. The match is now in Higgins's hands. It's all about now keeping yourself together. Six colours between John Higgins and one of the most remarkable clearances ever seen. 39. He had to overcome several difficulties after O'Sullivan broke down on 60. 42. Forty-six. Not quite on the blue as planned. That 51. is inch perfect. He rolled the red to the middle. He didn't think it was going to reach. It just dropped in. And now the black for a famous victory. O'Sullivan, first in with 60 in the decider. Yes! And Higgins clears up with a magnificent 64 to snatch victory on the final black by 10 frames to nine. John Higgins wins the Saga Masters after the most extraordinary of the many fine finals we've seen in the 27 years at this venue. John Higgins Senior congratulates his youngest. What a performance, what a match. John Jr's wife, Denise, oh, he's put her through it this evening. But it's an extraordinary triumph. So, the applause dies down, and here come the presentations. Now I'd like to introduce you to your presentation party and to present the trophies. Will you please welcome the Chief Operating Officer of Saga Insurance, Mr. Steve Ashton, and the Chairman of the WPBSA and World Snooker Limited, Sir Rodney Walker. And it's been a terrific nail-biting final and first to one of the finest players in the world. Your appreciation for the Saga Insurance Masters runner-up, Ronnie O'Sullivan. And ladies and gentlemen, regaining his title for the second time, the 2006 Saga Insurance Masters Champion, John Higgins! <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the 2006 Saga Insurance Masters Champion, John Higgins!
<clears throat> Ronnie, I know you're obviously disappointed with that, but what a fantastic performance in a classic match. Yeah, it's been a great tournament, and uh, you know it's just been finished off with a great clearance. And you know, um, give all credit to John; he, he played better all day, and I just hung in there. And I'm pleased I made a game of it. And uh, but he's a great champion, and you know, it's a uh, lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> He, um, the two players, of course, you've come through junior levels, you've come on professional circuit, you certainly seem to bring out the best in each other. Well, it's been a fantastic event and, uh, you know, the standard of play is very high and, uh, you know, it's been a great tournament and thanks to Saga and thanks for all the fans coming out and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Well done, Ron. Well done. You know, I'm going to start having a proper bet because I called 10-9 on the black this afternoon when it was 5-3 because both of you were playing so good. But what about that red in the last... How did that reach the pocket? I don't know. Uh, I, I just hit it and I didn't think it was going and I was praying, I was praying and kicking the floor, but I, but I managed to go in and then... Uh, I what a clearance now. Delighted. I, th I think the most important th uh, frame, John, was when you were 3-0 behind. I mean, you'd sat there watching Ronnie make 1-3-9, 1-3-8. I mean, that frame straight after, that was massive. You didn't want to be going in 4-0 behind. No, because uh, if he goes 4-0, he's won. Uh, that, that's as far as I was saying. I, I didn't think I'd be able to come back now the way he can... He, he can just freewheel away from you. So if it went 4-0, he'd won. That's what I was saying. So I was digging in to, to win the next frame, and then, then I was back in the match. And what about the clearance? How were you feeling then through that? I was actually, I was so calm. It was unbelievable. No, I, no, I, I, was, I was more nervous during, during the match. You know, I've missed a few shots to the rest. Uh, unbelievable. I, I, wish you could, I wish you could body Ronnie's, uh, Ronnie's left hand because with the rest, even all turn, I've, I've really struggled with it. And when I missed the black to go 8-5, that, that was my chance. But it just shows you this game. Now, you don't know, you don't know what's going to happen. And a final thought on this venue. It's been synonymous with snooker for 27 years. A wonderful crowd at Wembley. What's your thoughts on the last one here? Well, it's the best ever memory I'm going to have now for this, for this tournament. This, this tournament will live with me to my dying days. So thanks a lot to everybody and thanks to Saga. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, the Saga Insurance Masters Champion for 2006 is John Higgins. Steve Davis, can you just sum up your assessment of what's happened here this evening? Well, I think the greatest final we've ever seen in 27 years here. We've seen some exciting matches, but it was just superb. All in all, I think we've just seen a standard of snooker, the benchmark for the rest of the season, certainly the benchmark for the World Championship. And you've got to think that these two players will feature in the World Championship. The trouble is, they are due to meet in the quarter-final. There's sort of an inevitability of it going to the final frame decider. Yes, there seemed to be that dragging back. I've got to say, I think Ronnie O'Sullivan was very unlucky tonight. I think Ronnie had the best of it. He was magnificent under pressure. John was fantastic. He wasn't as good as, as Ronnie under pressure. But in the end, John Higgins' character and strength of determination got him over the line. And when it mattered, he potted all the balls he needed and he was a millimetre away from losing. That red just fell in. One millimetre, Ronnie wins it. What a send-off, John, this has been for the Masters tournament at the Conference Centre. Totally fitting, Ray. Absolutely fitting that it should be a classic. 27 years of snooker here. We've seen some wonderful stuff. I don't think we've ever seen a better match than that. You were saying before this final, this little rivalry developing between these two, a rivalry because... They're just producing great snooker. That's right, and I think, you know, even though there's great players around, like Sean Murphy, Stephen Hendry, Ding Jun Wee coming into the equation, plus a lot of other players that can win, I think we're getting to the stage where these two lads are producing snooker that we're going to see them in the final stages of many events. Whether they're BBC ones, we don't know. But the problem for me, the worry for me, is it's a shame if they have to meet in the quarterfinals of the world. John Higgins produced such terrific snooker in the Grand Prix, and he's come here and won this one now. He's showed that he's back to his very best. He's really turned his game around. I think a big change in his life, right? Obviously married, two children, you know, maybe didn't practice as much. He's gone back to the practice table, got himself sorted out, and he is a fantastic match player again, and a match for anybody. Well, with the final ball potted and the Masters trophy having been handed over, 
The next major as far as snooker is concerned is the World Championship. 12 weeks today, the tournament will be underway at the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield. Sean Murphy will be defending his title. The marathon that starts on April the 15th will be up and running. Well, this can only do great stuff for the World Championship because the players will come here once again. The standard of snooker has been terrific. And then we all kick off again in Sheffield, and who knows, they're the big one. Yes, and I think it's fantastic. I think Stuka may well be on the up because of the things that have been happening recently. We've got a few sponsors coming into the game. That's always healthy. I think anybody that's watched tonight, you've got to say, it's marvellous entertainment. You can argue what you like about whether it's a sport or not, but what <laughs> fantastic theatre. What great drama as well. And I think Snooker does owe the conference centre a great deck, John. It certainly does. And the people who've worked here for all those years, I know they're going to be very sad they were leaving it. They sent us emails tonight about what we've done for them and the piece we showed. It's a wonderful venue, and you've seen it tonight, packed to the rafters, and they've seen a classic. Well, the conference centre is emptying, emptying for the final time as a snooker venue. And my, oh my, the curtain came down to some truly masterful snooker. Good night from Wembley. Ron Sullivan to break. So this Masters final builds to a climax. Quiet, please. <coughs> break off from O'Sullivan in terms of length. Yeah, still left this red on. I wonder how John Higgins is feeling now. After missing that black in the last frame. That would have been a blow. He had other chances in that frame, Clive. I'm not just putting it down to the black, but the black is the one he'll remember. Could you believe that? Could only be the significance of the shot, not its intrinsic difficulty which caused him to miss it. Very experienced, though. He's missed a crucial balls before in matches and recovered to win them. Guiding the key ball back to Bork. From a psychological point of view, O'Sullivan's on the up. A reprieve, winning a frame that you have assumed you're going to lose is always 
a big boost. Played that badly, though. Yes, he might not have had the psychological boost, but it won't last for long if he plays bad safety shots like that. Caught the red much too thick. Always plays them with the trace aside, but didn't judge the throw there. And every ball that John Higgins pots now will be clear in his mind of that black in the last frame. He wouldn't be human if he wasn't thinking about it. That's why he left the arena. To try and clear his mind. a little way apart but uh, the plant is makeable black tied up at the moment attempted from that plant to leave pink to right middle if so he's considerably adrift of that yes yeah, that could have been the only possible colour he played on he's just looking now for a good position to play safe here so he didn't Don't score as many as he would have liked from that Opening. Well, that was a bit of luck for Ronnie O'Sullivan there. Flicked off another red. He put his hand up and apologised. Well, he's looking at the green. It's a thin cut. Couldn't quite be certain where the cue ball's going to finish. And he could have a nice easy roll up to the brown. But cut green it is. Had to judge the cue ball up and down the table that's pretty good oh. red to corner opens up blue to both middle pockets five which is useful with Black tied up and pink also far from ideally situated. Seventeen. 
Not perfect on the blue by any means here. He just finished awkward on that red. He had to avoid screwing back into the right middle pocket. A bit thinner on the blue than he would have liked. I don't know really he can play for a single red without playing a little cannon here. Well, he's played it round off two cushions as he judged the pace right. Perfect. Good shot. Once again, he got mighty close to that middle pocket. But this time there is an obvious, well, there's two obvious reds. The only red he's got to avoid cannon into if he comes down the left side is the red near the top cushion. But he was straight enough to hold. 28. But his big problems are those reds around the black. They're all covering one another at the moment. 29. This time nicely on the blue. Is it time to play a cannon? Well, he's looking just to leave that loose red to the right corner. 24. But it doesn't appear that any of those four reds 24. in and around the black spot are possible. Well, he's just checking now to see if the top one goes. Maybe that was the reason he hasn't played the cannon. Just goes, but he needs a good angle on the blue here. 35. Played it beautifully. 35. Under pressure, the touch. You have to be the first thing to go, but that's far from the case with O'Sullivan. 41. Yes, I think what we're seeing here is Ronnie O'Sullivan producing the goods under the maximum amount of pressure. A couple of times he's dropped two frames behind, but he's, he's kept himself together and, as you say, has not shown any signs of weakness whatsoever. And this is a man occasionally we criticise because sometimes he... Seems to, well, not so much throw the towel in or not so much put it over his head, but just not give his best. But you couldn't fault him today. Win or lose this match. This time, though, he hasn't got above the blue. He's dead straight on it. Yes, and he still needs the colour and one more red in the colour to make this frame safe. 47 52. points in front. Still 59 left. This red and the blue would be sufficient. <laughs> Wonderful part. He's on the blue that he needs. He's got the right angle, but he only needs the blue. trying to get on the next red. 53 points in front, 51 left. A great break this, unassisted by pink or black. a difficult one but uh, it was stitched together by inch perfect control and position on that blue Higgins needs a snooker to be fair there's not much John Higgins could do there he just trusted to a bit of luck but now that red's gone in Ronnie O'Sullivan is in front. One. For the first time, Clive, since he led 3 0. Six. 
six. Seven. Seven. So, largely through. Beautifully controlled 58 break. Ronnie O'Sullivan takes the frame to lead by nine frames to eight. One up, two to play, and the first time that he's been in front since his 3 0 lead disappeared and in a match which has contained so much fine snooker of all descriptions three century breaks from O'Sullivan some substantial breaks from Higgins much great safety play on both sides great duels <clears throat> what appears to be the most significant shot so far is this black that Higgins missed for a 9-7 lead. Instead, instead, O'Sullivan made it eight all, and uh, that gave him the impetus, it seemed to me, to play a fine frame, to take it with a 58 break, to go one up with two to play. Within one frame now, O'Sullivan of winning the Masters for the third time.